Hello and good evening from a picture-perfect Tanks Memorial Stadium here on the campus of Ironton High School, where tonight the Ironton Fighting Tigers debut on their home field, hosting the Gallia Academy Blue Devils in an OVC matchup. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Ben Spicer bringing you tonight's action live on the Montown TV Sports Network. My color commentator Mike Miller will join me momentarily. Ironton tonight is honoring their seniors during a special pregame ceremony, but in less than 20 minutes, they'll be shifting focus to their next opponent, Gallia Academy. Many feel this could be the toughest task for the Tigers in conference play, a date with the Blue Devils. Gallia Academy's come from behind 36 to 33 win over Ironton to win their first ever OVC crown in 2018 is still fresh on the minds of many Tigers fans and players, although Ironton got revenge with a 52 nothing win over the Blue Devils a year ago. Those past contests have little to do with tonight as we now have a fresh slate here in week two of this unconventional 2020 high school football season. Ironton enters at 1-0 following a 50-9 win over Portsmouth, while Gallia Academy comes in off a 41-0 win over South Point that was called at the half due to lightning. Both teams looked very strong in their openers, but each will need to be crisp and concise if they hope to advance to 2-0 on the year. Still plenty more to preview on what expects to be an awesome night of high school football. We'll get to that when we come back after this commercial break right here on the Montown TV Sports Network. This is Joel Dooley with AvantiClean. Do you have a mold problem, flooding, or water problems? The air ducts in your home or business need clean. I have a team of licensed and trained professionals ready to answer any home problem you may be having. Call us today at 606-331-5001 or find us online at AvantiClean.com. Credit unions are not real banks. Is that so? They're like secret societies with a rigorous process to join. <laughs> there are a lot of misconceptions about credit unions when in fact there are credit unions for everyone. What makes us different from other banks is that our members have a voice and our profits come back to you. At Members Choice Credit Union, you're a name, not a number. Quality Marathon Gasoline, great monthly specials on snacks and beverages, and fantastic service. Those are the qualities of Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shops are a division of the John W. Clark Oil Company. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Return. Refresh. Refuel. At Ashland Credit Union, things are a little backwards. As a strong supporter of youth education, Ashland Credit Union is the only area bank or credit union providing funds to six participating schools for every qualifying debit card swipe made. Gillum Drug, 1237 Carter Avenue, Ashland, is a locally owned pharmacy devoted to providing excellent customer service, not found at the chain drug stores, and Gillum Drug will treat you like family. Stop by today and experience it. Gillum Drug, next to Domino's. Welcome back in live high school football here on the MyTown TV Sports Network. Ben Spicer here at Tanks Memorial Stadium as Ironton honors their seniors. We will have coverage from senior night on the MyTown TV page coming to tomorrow. And now and we're joined by a special guest, Ironton now, alum Avery player. Book, a freshman Third at Glenville State. Avery, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. This is so strange. We were talking about it before we came back from break. Seeing the stands not jam-packed here at Ironton. How strange is that for you? It's crazy. I'm used to seeing, you know, two, three deep around the whole place. It's kind of it's upsetting, but it's, at least they're playing. Now, of course, uh, this is part of the OHSA regulations uh, that are in place with the COVID-19 protocols. Uh, we wanted to make a correction, and, and this is a big shout-out to the viewers who were leaving us comments in last week's broadcast. The beanbag between plays is actually uh, brought to the line of scrimmage by the center. That way the officials don't have to touch it. So. Uh, we wanted to clarify that. Uh, some COVID protocols, though, some notable ones in place by the NFL.
OHS and the OHSAA. Coaches must wear masks at all times. Uh, day of rosters are limited to 60 players and social distancing on the sidelines among some notable rules in that one. Uh, it's, as we said, it's weird obviously getting to see yeah. this. Uh, for you, how strange is it being in college? I'm now sure you guys aren't in person at the moment, right? Um, I have all my classes are hybrid, so I just meet once a week. But besides that, it's online. How are you liking it so far? College itself is nice, but I don't like the hybrid part. I'd rather it all be in person. Now, have you guys gotten to practice any football-wise? Um, it's all just weightlifting, and I go to the field and kick with the other kicker, and we just have fun out there. I was talking a little bit with Mike, and he said that you guys are hoping to play in the spring. Yeah, so as of right now, we have a five-game season and a conference championship, and we get to keep our eligibility. So I could play five years, That's awesome. which is awesome. So I could get my degree and potentially more. Do you know what you're majoring in, yeah? I'm majoring in marketing and minoring in psychology and criminology. Nice. Wow. You're going to be busy. Yeah, (laughs) I got a lot, but hopefully it'll pay out. Well, uh, last week a big win for your Ironton Fighting Tigers against Portsmouth. So strange again to see them playing Portsmouth in the season opener, I would imagine. No, I know, yeah. (laughs) I was hoping that they would keep Berg on the schedule. I wanted to see them beat him again, but – uh, 50 happen. to 9, the score in that game against Portsmouth. Looking at some notable stats 444 total yards of offense, 334 of those on the ground. It held Portsmouth to 110 total yards of offense, including just 26 yards rushing. Uh, that's pretty good. Ironton also did not punt in that first game, so we didn't get to see Kyle Howe, a guy who you sort of mentored over the yeah. summer a little bit. Yeah, um, I helped him out a lot in the fall. Well, I want to say a lot. I helped him out as much as I could. But. Um, yeah, I meant to come down more in the summer, but due to COVID, you know, got a little difficult. But he's I was sawing him warm up. He was doing pretty well, so I believe in him. I've got to ask you about uh, new kicker Jimmy Molmeister because he was really rocking those kickoffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Portsmouth got a nice return on the opening kickoff, and then from there he sort of angled the kicks to where Portsmouth's returner didn't have a chance. So what did you think about him on the kickoffs? Um, he did really well. Um I he has a he has a future. I feel like he could uh, continue getting better, and he Edward could Shader. make the special teams r- really well Drake. or make him really good. Shader. Yeah, I was gonna say, Avery, you're the only punter uh, kicker that I've seen ever land a punt on the one yard line twice in one game. That was <laughs> yeah. incredible in that state playoff game. Uh, do you remember that? What do you yeah, what do you that was out about it that? was it was pretty exciting. Um, uh, it was fun. I mean, I would do anything to come back and play another game, that's for sure. Um, the Ridgewood game by Michael far was Sanders. the most exciting, but I feel like I had my best Morgan. personal game against Gallia. Absolutely. Well, what are your predictions for tonight? What does Ironton need to do to come out on top here? I feel like um, if they just Jordan. play how they it's normally played against Ryan Portsmouth, Jordan it should be, I wouldn't say a blowout, but it would, shouldn't be competitive. Uh, Do you think special teams are a factor in this game? Oh, yeah, for sure. I feel like early on um, they may not get the yardage they want, so they may have to punt a couple times. I believe in Kyle. Maybe they can run a fake or two and get the first down and keep going. Well, Avery, we appreciate you coming on, and we're wishing you the best of luck at Glenville State. Uh, Looking forward to see what you can do there. Thank you. That is Avery Book joining us on the broadcast. We're going to step out, take a commercial break, and when we return, we'll preview this matchup as we welcome on color commentator Mike Miller. That's when we come back here on the My Town TV Sports Network. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Here at Infusion Solutions, one of the things that we're most proud of is the relationship that we develop with our patients. From the people on the phone to the delivery drivers, I mean, these people are a part of my life. They take care of me. I would recommend Infusion Solutions to anybody. Discover what we're all about right now at Infusion Solutions. If you can picture yourself in a better job and a better life, there are thousands of openings in Kentucky right now. And with the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, you can prepare for many of them tuition-free. Good at Ashland Community and Technical College, 
This scholarship offers 100% free tuition for classes that can prepare you for a great job in healthcare, advanced manufacturing, and more in as little as 13 weeks. Get started today at WorkReadyKentucky.com. Brand Man writes, if you like boneless wings, you dirty. Not anymore. B-Dubs completely reinvented their boneless wings. Now they're marinated and packed with so much meat, it doesn't make sense. Get here for the new boneless wings. Buffalo Wild Wings. Roar! And welcome back in Ohio High School Football here on the My Town TV Sports Network. Ben Spicer joined now by my color commentator, Mike Miller. Guy Academy set to take on Ironton tonight. The Blue Devils won the toss. They will receive as we're set to get started here in just about three minutes. Uh, one thing we didn't get to talk to you, Mike, or talk about, Mike, so far is Gallia Academy. Uh, mm -hmm. and we've got the national anthem going on, so yep. we'll pause here just yep. momentarily for that. Quality Marathon Gasoline, great monthly specials on snacks and beverages, and fantastic service. Those are the qualities of Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shops are a division of the John W. Clark Oil Company. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Return. Refresh. Refuel. If you can picture yourself in a better job and a better life, there are thousands of openings in Kentucky right now. And with the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, you can prepare for many of them tuition-free. Go to Ashland Community and Technical College. This scholarship offers 100% free tuition for classes that can prepare you for a great job in healthcare, advanced manufacturing, and more in as little as 13 weeks. Get started today at WorkReadyKentucky.com. A lot has changed this year, including the healthcare landscape of our region. In response, our King's Daughters family has grown. We are welcoming lots of new faces. Some are new to our community, but many have practiced here for years. In times like these, access to care is critical, and we are answering that call, giving patients the option to continue seeing the providers they know and love. One thing is certain, we are stronger together. 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 Watching high school football here on the Montown TV Sports Network. Ironton getting set to host Gowie Academy in their home opener. Ben Spicer, let's try this again, Mike Miller. You didn't get yeah, to talk didn't last talk. segment. Hey, listen, <laughs> hey, better Avery book talking than me. Uh, <laughs> trust me, uh, that was great for him to join us. We really appreciate him coming in. And uh, we may have him back on here a little bit during the game. He's got to cut out of here at halftime. But he uh, shared with us we might have a – interesting story or two from uh, last season. So. Nice. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Uh, before we kick off, and we'll see Galley Academy on offense first in their home white tops, or away white tops, excuse me, and uh, gray pants, Ironton in the black tops, and white pants. Uh, Galley Academy was without James Armstrong last year, their starting running back. Uh, big catalyst for their offense. Absolutely. Now, I'm sure last year, I don't know how much of a difference it would have made. Ironton won 52 to nothing, but yep. uh, he had a big first game against South Point last week. So, no doubt important here in this one. 11 carries, 151 yards, two rushing scores last week. And Noah Vando, the quarterback, I think Guy Academy mm -hmm. definitely has to be balanced here, Mike, tonight. Uh, there's no doubt. I think they've got to be balanced, but I think uh, they've got to spread it around, not get one-dimensional. We talked to Coach Pendleton this week on cross-section Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. He talked about trying to make a team one-dimensional, so I think you're going to see defensively for Ironton, they're going to try to make Gallia Academy one-dimensional. So I think it's going to be uh, critical for Gallia Academy to mix in the run with the pass, but – not just not run the plays, but be successful. We saw Portsmouth have a little bit of success last week 
with that, but then Ironton kind of figured out what they were doing and, and really uh, just clamped down on that offense last week. Briar Williams, James Armstrong back deep to return for Guy Academy, and it'll be Jimmy Maulmeister to kick off for the Tigers as the home season is underway here for Ironton. Maulmeister goes set to kick off for the Tigers. A little quick break out of the huddle, Mike. I think we might see some trickery down the road maybe from the Fighting Tigers yeah, as the they, season they, progresses. I've noticed that they did that a lot last week as well, so uh, you never know when that's going to change. Maulmeister with the swing, and it's Williams who will get this game underway as he returns it from inside the 10, gets it just past the 20, and that's where Gallia Academy will set up shop here to start things off, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's going to be interesting. You're going to see uh, – Gallia Academy come out and uh, try to, uh, well, yeah, try. I was going to say I thought I saw a flag, but again, it's that beanbag again that messes with me a little bit. But uh, you're going to see Gallia Academy, I think, try to establish a run with Armstrong to start out and then maybe do some play action off of that. Vando, the Gallia Academy quarterback. Excuse me, Vanco. We'll hand it off to Armstrong on the first play, and he is absolutely smothered by Nate Cochran. Short gain, if any at all, for Armstrong on that carry. Absolutely, Cochran in there. Uh, you know, that tough defense that Ironton has seems like every time they come around, it's been a trademark of Coach Pendleton's uh, team. So, uh, you know, it's not surprising to see them really uh, bow their neck up here on first down. We'll get you the defensive starters for the Tigers here in just a moment. Man in motion. He'll get it on the sweep. That's Williams. And nice Williams blocking. has a nice gain. As you said, he gets some blocking yeah. at the, the next carrier. level. That'll be close to a first down. Uh, Mike, you want to read off our defensive starters here? Uh, yeah, let's see. If you can read my yeah. handwriting. <laughs> We've got them. Uh, defensive end, we got Gunnar Crawford and Ashton Duncan at defensive tackle. Angelo Washington uh, at the outside linebacker spot, Dalton Crabtree, Lincoln Barnes. Uh, Reed Carrico, Cameron Deer in the middle. And cornerbacks Landon Wilson, Trent Hacker, safety Kyle Howe, and Trevor Carter for the Tigers. Gain of 16 on that run from Williams. Again, they send a man in motion. Armstrong sheds several tacklers and picks up a positive gain on the first down carry. There we see the ability of Armstrong on display, and that was something the Blue Devils were certainly missing at the latter half of the season last year. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. He made a positive gain out of what could have been a no gain or a, a negative yardage there. Carrico was in the backfield pretty quick, but Armstrong was able to get off that tackle and make some positive yardage for Gallia Academy. Pistol set for the Blue Devils with trips to the near side. They'll hand it off to Armstrong Ooh. again, and this time there's a host of orange yeah. helmets in there to drop him down. James yeah, that, that, that <laughs> he was there. You thought there was a hole there for a second, and then it closed quickly. You had about four Ironton Tigers in on that tackle there. So that'll bring up a third down and long. We have not seen Gallia Academy quarterback Noah Vanco throw the ball just yet. One could expect that he's going to put it in the air here on a third down and eight. Yeah, I think they just about have to uh, go on empty backfield here, so you got to feel like that's what's what, probably what's going to happen. Twin receivers to the far side, trips to the near side as it's an empty set. Vanco steps up in the pocket looking long. He's hit as he Ooh. throws, and Trevor Carter nearly came up with an interception, Vanco but it's going to bring up a fourth down for the Blue Devils. Yeah, I, believe, I believe that was uh, was that Gunnar Crawford there in the backfield, I believe. Just about got to Vanco, and then we almost had Trevor Carter uh, pick off that pass down there. So it was almost a turnover uh, in two separate uh, possibilities there for Ironton. Three and out, just what Ironton is expecting, and I think we got uh, Kyle Howell to return the punt here. Caleb Geiser will punt for the Blue Devils, and it's Kyle Howell back deep to return. It's Gallia Academy kicking from their own 35-yard line. Ironton should get some ideal field position to start off their first drive of the game. Geiser in no rush here to punt this one. Now he'll take the snap and send it long. Kyle Howe settling under it. He'll field it at Not the 35, and here's Kyle Howe taking off and being tackled just before he reaches midfield. Nice return there from Howe. Yeah, nice return there. Uh, Geiser did a, got a, a decent uh, distance on that punt, but the, the problem was he didn't get it very high, and uh, Howe was able to, to get a running start on that return, and was able to get it around the right side there and get about 15, 20 yards on that return. Ironton with great field position on their own 49 to start this drive. Not what you want to see if you're the Blue Devils. Both of these teams 1-0 and o here as Gallia Academy coming off a 41-0 win over South Point. Ironton topped Portsmouth 
to nine. Carpenter under center. He's got three behind him in the backfield on the first play from scrimmage. They'll hand it off to Reed Ooh, Carrico. And Carrico met almost care. immediately as soon as he takes the handoff by Cohen Duncan. Duncan. Yeah, nice job. He shed that block and got right on Carrico there. Great Duncan. job defensively for Duncan. Good first play defensively for Gallia Academy. As they'll say, Carrico lost one on the carry. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, brings up a second and 11. It's unusual. I know we saw it last week. It's it's the old, and it's probably it might be before your time, Ben, when they came out in what I call the old wishbone. It looks like a full house backfield. You had the fullback and two halfbacks, and you don't see that very often anymore. Hal and Hacker in a twin set. They'll send Hal in motion, and he'll take the jet sweep. Powell sheds one tackle, breaks another, and gets it into no. Gallia Academy territory. And we've got a late hit Flags on, the, on play. the play from a Blue Devil after that one was I over. Think, Looks like Michael B. Yeah, I think that's who it was. I, I wasn't sure if they were going to throw that flag. It's kind of like the official had his hand on it. It's like, mm, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and throw it. So it's a big break for Ironton here. Could have been third and long, but we're going to have a – what they call it? Targeting. Penalties doomed both Ooh. of these teams last week, and yeah, that's a that's a tough penalty against Gallia Academy. Yeah, I figured that was just going to be a, just a late hit, but they calling it a legal blow to the head or targeting uh, is is what it looked like. It's not targeting as we would see in high, in uh, college or in the pros, and has that uh, type of penalty with it. But it's 15 yards first down for Ironton. 9.06 to go here in the first quarter as it's the first down. Carpenter goes under center. He's got Howe out wide and Hacker to the near side. Carrico in the backfield. They'll fake the handoff. Carpenter rolls out and finds a completion to Cameron Deer. Deer uh -oh. off to the races. He's inside the 10, and he's brought down by his horse collar. Yep. Another Mitchell. penalty on the Blue Devils. Doesn't have as big of significance as the first one, no. but still Deer inside the red zone for the Tigers on Carpenter's first completion. Nice job by Carpenter. Had a nice fake, nice rollout, and then just – Put it in to, to Deer right in stride, and he was able to make a play and get down down the field. We're going to have first and goal inside the five, I believe. Horse collar against the Blue Devils. Gain of over 20 yards on that play, and then a no. horse collar, as you said. Not the way that Gallia Academy, Gallia Academy wanted to start the game. And we said both of these teams really struggled with penalties. Yep. Uh, Brings us up to a first and goal and a timeout taken by Gallia Academy. Still scoreless here early in this one, 8.49 to go in the first quarter. We'll be right back here on the Mytown TV Sports Network. At Ashland Credit Union, things are a little backwards. As a strong supporter of youth education, Ashland Credit Union is the only area bank or credit union providing funds to six participating schools for every qualifying debit card swipe made. Ironton on the Gallia Academy five-yard line. It's tossed to Reed Carrico, and Carrico's going to walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Touchdown Fighting Tigers. Lee. Ironton scores on their opening drive to take a 6-0 lead on the five-yard touchdown run from Reed Carrico. So, so far this season for the Ironton Tigers, they've had eight first-half possessions in two games, and they have eight touchdowns in two games. So they've scored a touchdown every time they've had the football in the first half of both games they've been playing. This that is a 100% efficiency <laughs> rate, Mike Hill. It's pretty awesome. I'm not very good at math, but I do know that. Yeah, yeah. Mallmeister on for the extra point. How the holder and the kick is up good. and good. We just went to a commercial break, so we'll keep it right here. 7 nothing. Ironton leading with 8.45 to go here in the opening quarter. Hey, big shout out to Darius Boykin. He is watching in an Ironton basketball legend here, nice. Mike Miller. Nice. Uh, but what are your thoughts after both of these teams have had one possession? Well, I mean, I thought, uh, you know, Gallia Academy made the, the, the first stand. You thought they had a little momentum, wasn't able to, 
to convert into a second one. But, you know, Gallia made a good play on the very first play from scrimmage from Ironton, but really shot themselves in the foot with a, a late hit or a, a blow to the head. And then another one on a horse collar on Cameron Deer down here close. You can't give Ironton, if you're Gallia Academy, you can't give Ironton free yards. If you give them free yards, they're just going to take advantage, and as they did on this drive, and went in and scored a touchdown, put them up seven to nothing in what just less than three minutes, uh, or just a little more than three minutes into the game. So Ironton appears to be on their game again this week, picking up right where they left off at the end of the first half against Portsmouth last week. For those in the Twitter verse, you can follow along for updates with the Ashland Daily Independence. Zach Clemmy, who is standing to the right of nice. me. Uh, he is tweeting out live updates, and he'll have the story in tomorrow's Ashland Daily Independent. So make sure you grab yourself a copy to read all about this game. Ballmeister set to kick off. It'll be Armstrong and Williams back deep to return again for Gallia Academy. As the Ironton special teams unit conversing again, they go with that little quick yeah, snap. Yeah, they've done that one of these days, it's gonna, they're going to they're gonna pooch it and recover a, a onside kick, I believe. Maybe saving that one for the postseason. Could be, could be. Malmeister to kick off. And that one angled over to the far side from our broadcast position. It's Williams fielding it from the five, and he's oh. in trouble. Brought down oh, there Williams by brother, Aaron sir. Masters. Mm, nice job there. Got them pinned down inside Aaron their own Masters 15. On the tackle. Nice coverage there by Ironton. Not a good start thus far for Gallia Academy as they looked solid offensively. They picked up yep. that first down on the little jet sweep, but after that they sort of stalled out and then they had a couple defensive penalties. Yeah, I think it's important here for them not to get down, not to press. You know, there's plenty of plenty of game left. They're only down one score. I think uh, they need if they can put together a good drive here, uh, get a couple of first downs together, they'll be in good shape. Vanco hands it off to Armstrong, and Ironton blows that <laughs> one up. It's Gunnar Crawford, who was in the backfield so much uh, last again. week at Portsmouth. They made him pay rent, Mike. Absolutely. I think they lost. Looks like he lost two or three yards. That's not a good start for Gallia Academy deep in their zone. They've got to start finding something to get some positive yardage here. Officially, they'll say a loss of four. Four, wow. 8.15 here to go in the first quarter. It's 7 to nothing. Ironton leading here. Vanko in the shotgun as he drops back to pass. Has a clean pocket looking yeah. long, and he has a receiver on the sideline, but it's broken up by that Landon Wilson. Pass, no flag on the line. field. Great defense from the Ironton sophomore. Yeah, that, that was open. Uh, I think they might have had just a touch – uh, air under on that ball, and, and Wilson was able to come in and break it up. But good uh, idea by Gallia and had a one-on-one on, one on one down the sideline here. Uh, if he went deep, he might have been able to get by him and complete that pass. But good idea from Gallia, just couldn't complete the pass. What we saw on that last play, too, a clean pocket, which might come into play here. Ironton knows the pass is coming, though. Venko this time, though, has Going some down time. There, he's got him. Looking over the middle of the field oh. and just sails Vanko over the head of James third. Armstrong. Again, James Landon Armstrong, Wilson Brevin in coverage, Mike. Back-to-back -back incomplete passes, and it's a short drive and a three and out for the Blue Devils. This is the same tonight, thing referee, that doomed Portsmouth last absolutely. week. Yeah, I, Landon Wilson, two big plays there, but uh, Armstrong was open coming across the middle uh, almost had to slow down just a touch there so I think uh, there's some good things happening on the Gallia Academy uh, Gallia Academy uh, passing game they just got to be able to complete a couple of those and they could have had a couple big plays there Caleb Geiser will return or will punt again for Gallia Academy and Kyle Howe's got to be licking his chops as his heels no, no are back on the Gallia 45 Another short kick, low and kick. He's going to field Look it out. inside the 40. Kyle Howell with some room. Howell is brought down on the tackle Kyle by Grant Howell. Bryan, but great field position Grant for the Tigers. Bryan. Yeah, already uh, within two yards of the red zone inside the 20. Uh, this is going to be difficult for that guy, the Academy defense, because uh, this is, uh, I call, like I said, free yards when they gave penalties up. They didn't get out of the back of the shadow of their own goalpost, didn't get it out. Gave up a short punt and then a big return to the 22. Going to be difficult for Gallia to hold Ironton here. 7.51 to go first quarter as Tatum Carpenter goes under center. I formation with 
Carrico in the backfield. Cameron Deer, the fullback, will fake it to Deer. Hand it off to Carrico as he runs right side, puts on a juke move, breaks one tackle, breaks another, and it takes a whole lot of white jerseys to bring down the powerful Carrico. Uh, that, I think you're going to hear that just about all year. It takes a lot of uh, white jerseys or the opposite team jerseys to bring down Carrico. Runs really hard, has a quick step. Really difficult to bring down. It seems like he's always falling forward when, after he gets hit, always trying to get that extra yard or two. Gain of eight on the play there. The ball is at the 11-yard line. Carpenter in the I formation again. They'll bring in Trevor Carter now. Carter, the running back, he'll take the handoff Big right hole. up the middle. Great blocking from the Ironton offensive line, and it'll be a first down for the Tigers. Yeah, nice job by that offensive line. Uh, you know, we tried to give them as much praise Michael as we could last week, but the they, they are, they're picking up right where they left off there too. I mean, it's just, uh, just moving people out of the way, and that gives the running back plenty of room uh, to make their, make their moves and, and to gain positive yardage. Back into a first and goal again. 6.44 to go now, opening quarter. Ironton with a 7-0 advantage as they'll take this snap from the right hash. Carter still in the backfield. Cameron Deer, the fullback. And they'll fake the handoff. Carpenter rolling out to his right, finds Deer, and Deer couldn't hold on to it. It's an incomplete pass. A little unconventional for the left-handed yeah. quarterback to be rolling out to his right there, but Deer was open. Yeah, Deer was open, and, and uh, I think uh, Carpenter was being chased a little bit. And, and rolling to the right, as you said, Ben, and for a left-handed quarterback, makes it, that throw a little bit more difficult. Uh, Deer got his hands on it, just couldn't come down with the pass. Uh, nice little play there going into the short side of the field uh, for the Irons and Tigers. This time they've got three guys in the backfield, Deer, Carrico, and Carter. It'll be a handoff to Carrico up oh, the middle. Carrico barreling over Blue Devil defenders, and he's in. Touchdown, touchdown Fighting Reed. Tigers. An eight-yard touchdown for Reed Carrico, his second touchdown run of the night, Mike. And I think that gives, if I'm not mistaken, that after last week, that gives him five Reed touchdowns, Reed. rushing touchdowns on the year already, and we've only played four and a half quarters of football in this season, so Carrico starting out fantastic this season. And really, if you think about it, Carrico's only played two and a half That's quarters true. now. That's true. Because he did not play in the second half last week. Mollmeister's extra point is good, and Here the Fighting Tigers, Tigers lead 14 to nothing with 6.23 to go in the first quarter. We'll be right back after this commercial break on the My Town TV Sports Network. This is Joel Dooley with AvantiClean. Do you have a mold problem, flooding, or water problems? Do the air ducts in your home or business need clean? I have a team of licensed and trained professionals ready to answer any home problem you may be having. Call us today at 606-331-5001 or find us online at AvantiClean.com. At Ashland Credit Union, things are a little backwards. We believe financial empowerment is important at any age. Okay, Sally. I've been going over this month's budget. Looks like I'm going to get ice cream every day now. Join the crew of Cross Section, Chris Pullum, Mike Miller, Brian Barber, live from the My Town TV studios as they talk local, regional, and national sports. Go to Facebook.com slash TV Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Thank you, Michael Beasy. Back here on the Cool Hits Sports or Cool Hits Sports Network. I'm just so used to saying that. I said that for three years now. Back here on the My Town TV Sports there Network. I knew I was going to do that at some point this yes. year. Uh, Ayrton with the lead here. I guess Molmeister missed the extra I point. I thought it, it was like good. It went through. The yeah. scoreboard reached 13 to nothing. Uh, Ironton with a nice start here, though, Mike, yeah, against the visiting Gallia Academy Blue Devils. Yeah, I mean, I, you couldn't ask for a better start if you're, you're Ironton here. I mean, th they had. That's what we thought. Yeah, we're not crazy. Yeah, yeah. we weren't crazy. They, they fixed it now. It's 14 to nothing. We wouldn't want Malmai. He hasn't missed an extra point this year. <laughs> so we wouldn't want him to do that because last week they had a little bit of a fumbled snap but ran it in for two points. Uh, Ironton couldn't have asked for a better start just like last week. They're they're coming out sharp. BC and Armstrong back deep to return now. BC watches deep as kick. this one's in the red zone. He bobbles it, and he'll say he called for a fair catch. So Gallia Academy with better field position on this <laughs> drive, but this feels like a pivotal drive in this contest, Mike. Yeah, it's 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 eerily similar to uh, the Portsmouth game last week. If uh, folks have watched that game last week, 
Portsmouth got a couple of penalties. Uh, Ironton got a couple of penalties early that helped Portsmouth out. They drove deep into Ironton territory, could not score. And then after that, Ironton kind of took over the game. Uh, Gallia Academy's had the opportunity to make a couple big plays, especially in the passing game, and just haven't been able to do it. Uh, critical drive here, I think, for them to at least get a few first downs. Gallia Academy brings in an H-back of Trent Johnson, and they'll try a little trickery. As it's James Armstrong swallowed up in the backfield again as it looked like that was Nate Cochran back there once more, Mike. Yeah, I think Cochran and uh, Washington for sure, and I think there was Nate another Cochran. Tiger in there before he ever even got to the line of scrimmage. By the time he got to the line of scrimmage, it was like there was three guys on him. And, uh, you know, I, it, it's just a, had been a difficult night so far running the football for Gallia Academy. Pistol set for the Blue Devils. Armstrong in the backfield. Vanko takes the snap. It's play action. And they've got a man uh. who can't come up with it. That was Trent Johnson, the intended receiver. It's going to bring up a third down and yeah. 12 now for the Blue Devils. James Not Armstrong, the key player for Gallia Academy. So far, I've got him five carries, negative two yards. Yeah, not that that would have been a huge play, but that would have been positive yardage. He had a couple of Ironton Tigers he had to beat out there in the flat. But if uh, Johnson would have come down with that, I think we'd have gained uh, probably four or five yards at least and made this a third and short. Fanko looking to the trip side of the is. field. That's the near nice. side, and they'll pick up a first down on the completion to Briar Williams. Yeah, Briar, Briar Williams, Williams did a good job. You had uh, number nine, Kenan Franklin, going good. down on that post pattern, and uh, Briar Williams come in behind him, settled into that zone, into that little pocket there, and was able to catch the ball and got a first down for Gallia Academy, which is what they needed, some positive, some positive things that, for them to happen. 14-yard gain on Vanko's first completion. And it's going to be really a to got an offsides on neutral Ironton, zone infraction, yeah. yeah, for sure. Pick your poison on that one. There are yeah. a couple of Tigers guilty of that penalty. Offside. So you, you get Gallia Academy here. They get five free yards, first and five. They get another first down. Maybe they get up here past midfield. Maybe they get a little bit momentum going and, and can keep this drive alive. If they can go down and get some points, maybe we've got a little bit of a ball game. Benko takes the snap. And it's going to be a pass here on first down. He finds his reliable target of Williams once more. Mm -hmm. And Williams brought down that by Ironton's Dalton Crabtree. Yeah. I don't think there was much of a gain, but uh, Vanco did have some time to throw the football that time. So, uh, you know, maybe maybe Gallia Academy's found a little bit here, but Ironton's defense has done a good job. Their defensive back and their linebackers on coverage kind of keeping the ball in front of them and not letting uh, Gallia get too many yards. Might have gotten a yard on the play. Officially second down and five. We're under five minutes to go in the opening quarter. Blue Devils leading or trailing 14 to nothing here as Armstrong takes the handoff. And again, he is swallowed James up as soon as he gets the ball. ball Gunnar Crawford, Gunner Crawford in there first again. for Ironton. I mean, how many times have we said that Crawford, in the first game and tonight, Gunnar Crawford in the backfield making a big play. Uh, he's having a great year so far. Really disruptive in the backfield, whether it's on a, a pass play or a running play. He just seems to be in there very quickly and blowing it up. Michael Bc and Zach Belleville out to the far side of the formation. Trips to the near side as it's Franklin, Williams, and Little Armstrong. Screen. Armstrong catches the screen, makes oh. a couple Tiger defenders oh. miss, and stumbles just before he gets to the 40. Great move by Armstrong there. Thought he was going to be able to get to that first down. Uh, you got fourth and about two or three. Looks like uh, Gallia Academy is going to go for it here, Ben. I think this is a very important play for both of these teams. Now they'll flip the formation. They've got trips out to the far side, and Ironton's going to talk things over. Time they'll out. take a timeout here. Uh, Gallia Academy trailing 14 to nothing and opting to go for it in their own territory. What do you make of that, Mike? Well, I think uh, Coach Penrod is is thinking, you know, well, this may be a pivotal time. I mean, granted, we're still our halfway, well, about four minutes to go in the first quarter, uh, but I think – They've got a little bit of momentum, made a couple of first downs here. So he's thinking, well, maybe we've got a little thing happening here. Maybe we'll be able to do that. Or he may have just come out there and tried to draw them off sides like they've done once in this drive already. But I think uh, he's seeing that maybe this is an opportunity for us to get another first down, get a real positive, uh, at, real positive play for the team and get their morale up and really get some momentum here because – you know, if they give the ball to Ironton here, you got to be concerned that Ironton's going to march it right back in for a touchdown. So uh, it looks like they may have changed. looks like they're going to punt the football, I believe. Yep, he had changed his mind. That may have been a way to just maybe try to draw them offsides. 
Other OVC games going on tonight. Cole Groves at Fairland, Chesapeake at Rock Hill, and South Point hosts Portsmouth. Caleb Geiser on to punt for the third time today. Kyle Howell back deep to return for Ironton. Got an opportunity to, to put Ironton deeper down the field than they have the rest of the game. Howell feels it just inside the 30. Trying to make a Blue Devil defender he's, miss. Easy did a, a good job. A whole lot of white jerseys Howell, there as soon as Howell, Howell caught the ball. Good kick coverage from the Blue Devils. Yeah, Michael Beasy got down there Michael and, and broke down the right in front of Howell and, and was able to at least hang on until he got some help uh, and kept Kyle Howell, who's very dangerous, returning that football on the punt and was able to keep it right there where he caught the football. Minimal gain from Howell, Ironton. We'll start this one off at their own 32, leading 14 to zero here with 3.47 to go in the opening quarter. High school football is back here at Tanks Memorial Stadium. Big thanks to those of you tuning in on the MyTown TV Sports Network. Carpenter under center, it's an eye formation for the Tigers. Kyle Howell in motion as it's a play action. They'll fake the reverse and go long. Trent Hacker's oh. there, but it just sails over his head. They had Gallia Academy beat yes, on that deep did. shot. It was just about a step and a half too long. Great play, great route by Hacker. He went back through there, split those safeties on that post route, and the action in the backfield kind of froze those safeties. Hacker was able to get behind him. Would have been a touchdown if it had been completed because he was at least three or four yards behind those safeties. Brings up a second down and 10 now after the incompletion. We go with an eye formation. Will York in at receiver. Ironton will also bring in Erickson and Barnes, and they'll hand it off to Reed Carrico. Carrico with a big hole, and Carrico mm. is able to pick up a first Reed down for the Carrico Tigers the as he gets it all the way down to the Ironton 46. It's a gain of 14 on the, on the run. Yeah, another, uh, you know, Ironton just Tigers. going to their strength. The running game seems like Ironton's strength every year is the running game. Carrico just, you know, showing why he's a Division I recruit going to Ohio State. Uh, nice job by the offensive line there, just straight up the middle, straight man-on-man, -man run blocking. Nice job by them. Hoping that the Buckeyes can play some football this year. Ashton yeah, Duncan, the tight end on the right side of the offensive line as Carpenter now in a shotgun. He'll fake it to Carrico, and he's looking nope. upfield. And the oh. catch is made by Aaron Masters. Masters going to take that one to the house. Touchdown, Tigers. 54 yards on the touchdown. Wow. Aaron Masters. Carpenter to touchdown. Aaron Masters. Masters listed as a quarterback on the roster, but we've seen him at receiver at times this year, and he comes up with a big play. Well, and, uh, and you think about Masters uh, listed as a quarterback on the roster. Was it last week? Will York, the backup quarterback, makes a big touchdown catch down at Portsmouth. Uh, these guys are willing to contribute to make the team better. Uh, great job by Coach Pendleton, and these guys really – uh, putting forth the team attitude and doing whatever it takes to win a football game. Mallmeister's extra point is good, and Ironton has a 21 to nothing wow. lead yeah. here at home good. over Gallia Academy. You're watching high school football here on the My Town TV Sports Network. Whether your family is gathering at our house or yours, let Smoke and Jays make it easy. Smoke and Jay's Ribbon Brew House, located just two miles off I-64 at exit 185 in Ashland, Kentucky. What if I told you there was a place where you didn't need to worry about a dress code or fancy reservation? Oh, and they also had a $10 lunch menu and 40 items under 20 bucks. The Winchester Steak, Seafood, and Bourbon Bar. All flavor and no fuss. As good of a start as you could ask for the home team, Ironton Fighting Tigers. They lead 21 to nothing with 3.08 to go in the opening period. Ben Spicer joined by Mike Miller here on the MyTown TV Sports Network. The kickoff from Mallmeister is fielded by BC inside the five. BC with a nice good return move. as he takes it down. Nice. Now the near sideline puts on a stiff arm and a big return Michael for Michael BC all the way to the Blue Devil 44. Yeah, he did a great job. He, he made that one move like he was going to go back towards the center of the football field and then cut it to the sideline and was off. 
great, uh, great play, great first, uh, but great return uh, and way to start this drive off for Gallia Academy. Best field position by the far tonight. Some much the needed life for the Gallia Academy and Blue Absolutely. Devils as they trail 21 to nothing. Briar Williams on the near side of the formation, and they've got Belleville and another receiver out to and the far Briar side. Williams. And here's Briar Williams on the carry as he gets it out near midfield. Briar Gain of about Williams five the there on carry. first down. Yeah, good positive gain there. Briar Williams is, uh, was uh, made a couple big plays in that last drive. Uh, they're going to him a little bit. Looks like they're doing kind of what Portsmouth tried to do against Ironton last week, maybe go a little bit wider, maybe try to use their speed to get outside of Ironton. Uh, we'll see if that is the recipe to get them back in this football game. Williams, the leading rusher so far for the Blue Devils, two carries, 22 yards. They had it at midfield. Now they'll push it back to the 49 of Gallia Academy. Blue Devils still looking to get in Ironton territory for the first time tonight. Mm -hmm. Armstrong to the right of Vanco, and he'll get it, and he won't get much. Jay Loses Cameron a couple yards. Lose. Cameron Deer with the tackle Cameron for loss. Yep. On the tackle. They have Armstrong figured out at least so far tonight. Yeah, at least, at least right in the middle there. They're having a hard time. In the, the center and two guards, Ironton's really blowing up uh, the center of that line, and, and Gallia Academy's having a hard time getting a push to get some openings for Armstrong. They've done better and gained more yardage when they went outside a little bit or when they went uh, to the throwing game. Big third down here for Gallia. Vanco in a shotgun formation. Trips to his right. One receiver all by himself to the left side. Blitz coming off the edge on the left side. As it's Crabtree He's coming on, and a completed pass. What a throw there as it's BC Back coming up with a big play. He gets it all the way inside the Ironton red zone. Nice play there by Vanco waiting for him to come open. BC uh, did just what Briar Williams did on that uh, earlier drive was kind of let a guy go deep, and then they're bringing a guy underneath and kind of settling into that zone when Ironton's playing zone on him. Got you, Academy. Quickly getting to the line, and I think they might have gotten a penalty on the Tigers again. Yeah, this is obviously the deepest uh, that guy has been in Ironton territory. All sides. And getting a first and top. five now. So big opportunity for Gallia Academy here to punch us in the end zone and cut it to a 21 to 7 game. Ball now at the eight yard line of Ironton. Big play Keep from Vanco to Michael B.C. B.C. has been huge over the last several minutes of this game. Had yeah. the big kick return and a long reception as well. H-back, as we've seen throughout this game, is Trent Johnson for Gallia Academy. He'll go to the right side of that offensive line. Shotgun formation for Vanco. As Vanco gestured over to Briar Williams, we'll see what the call is on this one. Delay of game. It's a delay of game, so they'll lose delay. the five yards. <laughs> yeah, that they, they just picked up, yep. Back to first and 10 from the 13-yard line. Still not horrible. You only lost the five yards that you gained. You're still first and 10 what you started out before the, the defensive offside penalty. But uh, Gallia Academy really needs to take advantage of this. Under a minute to go now, first quarter, 21 to nothing. Ironton Vanco takes the shotgun snap, looking to his left. Now we'll come back Little with a screen. screen to Armstrong. Armstrong is going to score, but we've got a penalty on the that field as it looks like this one's coming back, a block in the back. Yeah, I think Riley Starnes got the guy in the back. I think, uh, let me see, I believe he blocked Lincoln Barnes there. Uh, looks like that that's going to be a penalty on Gallia, I believe. It looks like it from our vantage point, mm -hmm. at least. We'll let the officials settle things out here. Oh, well, they're settling this out. How's that nice, cool breeze? Is it not starting to be football weather, It feels Bill? like fall. Oh, face mask. I didn't, huh, interesting. Face mask on the offense. Don't see that one too often. No, you don't see that one too often. I didn't necessarily see that either. I thought, as you mentioned, Ben, that it was going to be a block in the back, but Gallia Academy going in the wrong direction now. You're sitting at, uh, I guess it'll be first and 25, uh, where they were sitting at first and five just uh, – a couple of plays ago, now they're back at first and 25. Costly mistake. I like the play design there from mm -hmm. the Blue Devils, but now they're backed into a first and 25, as Mike said, from the Ironton 28. Three down linemen for the Tigers. Fanko sends a man in motion. Now looks over the middle oh. of the field. He had a wide open oh. receiver. Yep. If he could that was Zach Bell. they're calling that incomplete, too. Well, now they'll say it's incomplete. Thought he caught it, but, yeah, he was wide open. I don't know, there wasn't, wasn't an Ironton Tiger within five yards of him. He might have been able to score. 
Uh, or never mind, he trapped it. <laughs> incomplete pass. So it now like he had caught it from here. Yeah, That's yeah. But we are looking into the sun. That might have been a little bit difficult. But I'll give the officials the benefit of the doubt. They're closer than I am on that play. Vanko has a bunch formation to the far side of the field from our broadcast position here atop Ken Jones Memorial Press Box. Vanko just chucks one oh. up. Two Ironton players collide Kyle as that Howland. looks like Trevor Carter yeah. and Kyle Howe, the two Trevor Tiger Carter. safeties running into each other. I think I think Gallia is going to go back again. I believe this is going to be a hold, Ben. Yeah, we've got a flag Flags down on the, on the field. Let's see what the call is. Penalties again. Proving to be costly for the Blue Devils so far mm -hmm. in this one, especially if this one's on Gallia Academy. If they take the play here to be third and 25. If they take the penalty. Penalties declined. Yeah. Holding against Gallia. Ironton declines the penalty. Well, I think if you're Gallia, Gallia here, you've got to – You've got to try to get maybe 10 or 15 yards and hopefully maybe get a shot of the field goal to at least try to get on the board. 38 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Ironton with a 21-0 advantage. Gallia with a real opportunity now backed up third and 25. It's got to be difficult. Looks like they might have got yeah. Ashton got Duncan to, to yeah. jump early there on that one. I believe that's the third uh, defensive offsides that All we've sides. had. Uh, so Tigers. far in this first quarter. I don't know if it's the cadence of Vanco or or they're just expecting uh, a certain, just on the first count that they're going, uh, Ironton anticipating it and have been costly three penalties, have cost them three penalties so far. Empty set for Vanco. As they'll try it now, third and 20. And there you see the cadence, and he looks over mm -hmm. to the sideline. Maybe to make an adjustment, Cameron Deer coming up as the quarterback of that defense along with Reed Carrico to make some adjustments as yeah, well. He's really spreading out here. And now Gallia Academy going to call for a timeout as Coach Penrod wants to talk Time things out. over with Blue his Devils. Blue Devils. Big play here, Mike, for Gallia Academy. Yeah, I think, uh, I think you know, when you say – if it's third and 25 and you just get a five-yard offside, I think this is huge. It puts them down to the 23-yard line. If they can even just get 10 yards, that should get them within an uh, opportunity to kick a field goal that would get them to, to at least on the board. Uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, that doesn't mean they still won't score here, but, you know, they drove all the way down uh, into uh, probably about the 13-yard line, got first and, first and 10. Got a five-yard penalty against Ironton. Got to first and five, and then they've been backed up ever since. Had a holding penalty and even had another penalty that was declined. So I, I think Gallia Academy's really got to, if they can't get a first down, at least get some positive yardage to be able to try to at least get on the board, uh, and that would give them a little bit of momentum going forward to say, hey, we can play with these guys. We were able to move the football. Big stat that stands out that won't come into play on this play, obviously, because we know the Blue Devils are going to put it in the air. But Gallia Academy so far, nine carries for just 14 yards. Vanko back to throw, looking left side of the formation, and he is sacked oh, by Carrico. Fumble. Fumbled the ball, and Ironton fell on it at first. But now it's Gallia Academy coming up with the recovery as that's Joshua Peaks yeah. getting to it for Gallia Academy. But the sack from Carrico to bring up a fourth down in a mile. And, that, and, and as crazy as this sounds, that was a big break for Gallia Academy being able to cover that football. They can now punt it, maybe get Ironton inside the 15-yard line to start this next drive. If nothing else, the positive you take out of that drive for Gallia Academy is you flip field position on Ironton. So you hopefully are able to pin Ironton deep here and uh, get your defense back on the field who's had a little bit of a rest and allow them, uh, you know, to really get out there and get after Ironton. But we, I think we got the end of the quarter. We've got a fourth and 40 coming up for the Blue Devils when we return here on the Mytown TV Sports Network. That's the end of
Man writes, if you like boneless wings, you dirty. Not anymore. B-dubs completely reinvented their boneless wings. Now they're marinated and packed with so much meat, it doesn't make sense. Get here for the new boneless wings. Buffalo Wild Wings. Roar! Coach Penrod and the Blue Devils sending out punter Caleb Geiser on a fourth down and 40. As Kyle Howe set to field this one for the Tigers, who lead 21 to nothing as we headed to the second quarter. Ben Spicer joined by Mike Miller here on the MyTown TV Sports Network. Ironton looking the part of a state runner-up last year as they're seeking to return and play for another championship in the Ohio High School Athletic nice Association high Division 5. Hal has some trouble with it. Now he picks it up as he fills it at his own 15, gets out to about Kyle the 25. Return. It's a return of around 10 yards for Kyle Hal. Brody yep. Fallor on the tackle. Brody Fallor there on the tackle. I think, you know, as I said before the quarter break, I think, you know, this is, uh, if nothing else, Gallia Academy was able to flip the football field, flip field position on Ironton, you know, down at their own 25. Uh, Ironton's, you know, been able to have short fields their first two or three, their first three possessions. We'll see what they can do here uh, and see if they've got, you know, they got to go 75 yards for a touchdown. We'll see if Gallia's defense can st stiffen up. Carpenter in the shotgun as they send a man in motion and giving the handoff for Ironton is Landon Wilson. Wilson might have picked up a yard. He was met immediately Landon there Wilson by the Cameron there. Webb for Gallia Zach Academy. Hemby on the tackle. Excuse me, Zach Hemby. Nice job by Gallia Academy. Short uh, short to no gain on first down. That's what they need to do. Now they've really got, they've got two downs if they can hold Ironton, force them to punt. And I believe if Ironton is forced to punt, that might be their first punt on the season. It was. They did not punt last week at Portsmouth. Interesting to see if Avery Book's tutoring of Kyle Howe paid off. Yeah. Carpenter hands it off to his fullback, Cameron Deer, and Deer stumbles ahead for a gain of six. It'll Cameron be a third Deer down and about four for Ironton coming up. Yeah, big third Ready down for this guy, the Academy tackle. defense here. If they can uh, really stop Ironton here on this third down, force them to punt. Uh, you know, I think Gallia did some good things on that offensive drive. The last time they had the football, they had some penalties that pushed them back, but they were able to make some positive yardage. If they can get a stop here, then I think it gives them a little bit of confidence that they may be able to put a score on the board. One receiver to both sides. Oh, and it's nice a read fake. option. Carpenter has a lot of room. They'll pitch it to Carrico. The play is blown dead. Wow. Not was... sure why. Carrico would have taken that one all the way. I think they thought think, Cameron Deer had the football. That's what I think, and I think the official was blowing the whistle that he was down. I mean, uh, you know, Carpenter did such a great job that he faked the official out there. Uh, you know, he Oftentimes you see an option fake that's so good it fakes out the cameraman. Yeah. I've never seen an option fake I, so good it fakes out the officials. I haven't either, and that's a, that's a, <laughs> a big break for Gallia Academy, tough break for Ironton here. Uh, we're going to see what's going to happen here on this third down. But a great play by Carpenter uh, with that fake there and uh, pulling it. And then it, it could, he could have kept running or he could have pitched it. I think Carrico was the pitch man on that. Could have could have run for days, I believe. Uh, that He had uh, everybody fooled, including the officials, as we found out. Yeah, there was nobody around Reed Carrico. He could have walked once he passed midfield into the end zone. Yeah, the, the head official just said since whistle. inadvertent whistle. So I'm a, that was true. What what they found out was they expected the guy that he he had the ball and was down. Will York to the far side of the field at receiver Erickson Barnes near side from our broadcast position here. Carpenter, the quarterback in a pistol set, same formation that Ironton was just in. As they've got Ashton Duncan as a tight end on the left side of the offensive line. Now we're set to go. Here's the snap. This time they'll hand it off oh. to Carrico up the middle. Carrico able to break free him. from the tackle attempt of Cohen Reed Duncan. Carico It'll depend on the spot, carrier. but it looks like Carrico picked up just two there, which yeah. would be short of the first down. You know, going back to that previous play and the inadvertent whistle, that is one good thing about having a smaller crowd. I could actually hear what that official said to Coach Penrod on the, on the uh, sideline to explain what happened. We've got Ironton going for it here on fourth down. 
See if the Tigers elect to go forward or if they just try and draw the Blue Devils off sides here. Both these teams a, struggled a bit with penalties tonight. Yeah, what a big play it would be, though, if Gallia, if Ironton does complete the play, if Gallia Academy can stop them. Carpenter under center. And they will go for it. They'll give it to the second man through Carrico, and Carrico is able to pick up the first down. What? Needed two, he got four. Was there any question who was going to get the football on that one, though? No. Yeah, it's going to be Carrico. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Nice job by Ironton. I suspected. Looks like we've got uh, number 63 for Ironton there limping a little bit. That is uh, Rocky White, who is the center. Looks like he's going to walk it off, but looks like he twisted his ankle just a little bit there on that last play. Rocky, one of Ironton's seniors. Again, we will have the senior night ceremony uploaded to the My Town Facebook page tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. So first and 10 from the 37 as Ironton looks to add to their 21-point advantage. Carrico in the backfield to go with a little bunch formation to the left side of the offensive line as Carpenter looking to throw. Oh. Carpenter escapes pressure, looking upfield, and is brought down on the sack by Brody Fleur. Nice Brody play, Fleur. nice play by Fleur there. If he get, if Carpenter get, Carp, excuse me, if Carpenter gets past him, he's got a long way to run. I think we've got another timeout, maybe Ironton. Loss of five on that play. Tigers take a timeout. They lead 21 to nothing. We'll be right back with Time high school out. football action Iron here on the Montown TV Sports Network. This is Joel Dooley with AvantiClean. Do you have a mold problem, flooding, or water problems? The air ducts in your home or business need clean. I have a team of licensed and trained professionals ready to answer any home problem you may be having. Call us today at 606-331-5001 or find us online at AvantiClean.com. At Ashland Credit Union, things are a little backwards. We believe financial empowerment is important at any age. Okay, Sally. I've been going over this month's budget. Looks like I can get ice cream every day now. Join the crew of Cross Section, Chris Pullum, Mike Miller, Brian Barber, live from the MyTown TV studios as they talk local, regional, and national sports. Go to Facebook.com slash TV Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Yeah. 8.52 to go here before halftime. Ironton nursing a 21-0 lead. They've got a second down. And 15 here as they're at their own 32-yard line. Carpenter goes under center eye formation for the Tigers here. Hacker and Howell oh. out wide. Hand off to the fullback, Deer. And wow. Deer, the fullback, gets a big first down. Yeah. Needed 15, and he got 16, Mike. Yeah, nice job there by that offensive line. That was a little uh, fullback trap play, I think, that Deer scored a touchdown on last week against Portsmouth. Uh, you had uh, C.J. McCall and Rocky White both had big blocks on that. A deer was a, They cleared a big hole. Deer came right through it, had a big gain for Ironton. As a former fullback yourself, you have to appreciate the big <laughs> guy getting some love. Oh, no doubt about that. You, uh, it, you know, that was about the only play that I ever got to run. It was maybe four times a, a game. You got to run the little trap up the middle, and that was it. Duncan coming in late for the Tigers. He's the 11th man on the field. Guy Academy sending a blitz as Ironton comes inside on the screen. Kyle Howe took a pop that time from Darrell Scott. Well, the Academy, as we were talking about in the break, starting to come alive a little bit here, a big defensive series for the Blue Devils. Yeah, First I mean, that, now score, you. Portsmouth seven, South Point seven. Wow. Portsmouth seven, South Point Memphis seven. seven, Wheelersburg seven. Wow, another surprising no, yeah, score. Yeah, Memphis and Wheelersburg tied at seven. A good job here by Guy Academy. Uh, had that incomplete pass. Now you got second and ten. Uh, so they've got a little bit of an advantage here. Be interesting to see if Ironton tries to throw again or goes back to that tough running game that they had. Landon Wilson in the backfield along with Trevor Carter. Snap is high. Carter's going to have uh -oh. to fall on that for Ironton, and he does, but it's a big loss for the Tigers, and it's going to bring up third down Carter, and a whole lot for Ironton. Yeah, that was that's huge for Guy Academy. They really got to. Uh, do well here. I mean, what play do you have for third and forever? Uh, third and 28. Of course, it's not as big as the, what was it, fourth and 40? 40. 40. I think the guy Academy had on their last possession. 
So we'll see what Ironton comes up with here. Uh, Gallia Academy just can't get beat deep. Got to try to keep everything in front of them if Ironton decides to pass. Gallia Academy late getting a man off the field. Mm -hmm. Ironton, I don't think, noticed it. They send a man in motion, Landon Wilson. Carpenter looking to his right. Now stepping up in the pocket. Got all day to throw. He's just going to take off. Yeah. And that's he's brought job, down though. by Gallia Academy's Trent Johnson. Okay, yeah, I think that's a smart play from Trent the Johnson. sophomore quarterback, Carpenter. Don't force anything. You're up 21-0 and exactly. give Gallia Academy a good spot on the field. Exactly. Yeah, it, it, that was a good play by him. You know, it's like take what, get what you can get, and then we'll, we'll punt the ball. Again, the first punt of the season. Uh, if we have a break here, we might uh, get Avery on to see what he thought about Kyle's punt here on uh, on this play since he was been tutoring him a little bit in the offseason. James Armstrong back deep to return for Gallia Academy. Let's see if he can make a play in special teams. Ironton has done a good job against him defensively. Al with the rugby style punt, and he got a hold of that one. Armstrong will watch as that one takes wow. a bounce all the way inside the 20. It'll be touched at the 19-yard line. Heck of a punt from Kyle Howe. Nice job. I mean, you, you know, you see that a lot more now today, a rugby-style punt. But if you get that bounce and it rolls, I mean, just like Kyle Howe did, put them inside the 20-yard line. Good stuff there. And you run that little rugby-style punt at the high school level, especially with an athlete like Kyle Howe, and you think maybe down the road Howe sees something he likes, he takes off. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I mean, you, you've got you've to be – Real careful if you're in, in punt safe. I think you would have a difficult time trying to block a punt on Ironton with Kyle Howell as your punter because he is a great athlete. Empty formation here for Vanco on first down. Quick pass as it's a screen out to oh. Armstrong, and Armstrong couldn't hold on to it. And he had a little bit of room on the inside there. Uh, and if he, if he could have made that catch, he, he could have probably picked up a first down. Ironton with a three-touchdown lead here in their home opener. They honored their seniors tonight. Big shout-out to those of you tuning in here on the Montown TV Sports Network. B.C. and Armstrong in the backfield with the quarterback, Vanco. They'll send B.C. out in motion. Vanco with all oh, day to throw. Got going him. deep, and he's got a man wide open. Coming up with the catch is Briar Williams. Williams turning on the Jets. And he's going to score 81-yard wow. touchdown for the Blue Devils. What a big play for Gallia Academy. I wasn't sure if he was going to make it all the way because he had to slow down to catch that ball. But Briar Williams just uh, turned it on and scored after he caught the ball. Big 81-yard touchdown there for Gallia Academy. Much needed for the Blue Devils. They are not done yet no. on the 81-yard connection from Vanco to the junior, Briar Williams. And Vanco's yeah. fired up down on the sideline. Yeah, he is. Another perk of the limited capacity. Yes. He, he, you guys great. might have been able to hear that. He yeah, is fired up. He is, he is fired up. Geiser on for the extra point for Gallia Academy. Snap is in. Here's the hold, and the kick is up and through. 21-7 to seven your score. Ironton leading, but Gallia Academy's on the board with 6.21 to go before halftime. We'll be right back here on the Montown TV Sports Network. This is Joel Dooley with AvantiClean. Do you have a mold problem, flooding, or water problems? The air ducts in your home or business need clean. I have a team of licensed and trained professionals ready to answer any home problem you may be having. Call us today at 606-331-5001 or find us online at AvantiClean.com. At Ashland Credit Union, things are a little backwards. We believe financial empowerment is important at any age. Okay, Sally. I've been going over this month's budget. Looks like I'm going to get ice cream every day now. Join the crew of Cross Section, Chris Pullum, Mike Miller, Brian Barber, live from the MyTown TV studios as they talk local, regional, and national sports. Go to Facebook.com slash MyTownTV Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Back here on the Montown TV Sports Network, Gally Academy is on the board on an 81-yard touchdown pass and a little squib kick from Geiser, fielded by Ironton's Cole Freeman. And Freeman making a couple guys miss. He's down at about the 33-yard line, so that's where Ironton will start on this drive. 
Joined now by our guest who was with us in the pregame show, Avery Book. Avery, we've got to ask, what did you think of Kyle House punt there, the first of the season for Irons? It was pretty nice. He had the spin on it, and it went inside the 20. Can't ask for much better than that. Now, I, I can't remember. You weren't a rugby-style guy, were you? Um, I could I could do both. I was mostly a straight-on dude, but um, in the West Jeff game, I did the rugby stuff, and we did a fake off of that, if you remember, yeah. and I had a little – we got the first down on that. It was pretty nice. I, I was going to say, you had some speed, and yeah. so your senior year, Coach Pendleton comes to you and says, hey, maybe you want to play a little wide receiver? Yeah, so in the preseason, um, <laughs> Coach had me play some uh, wide receiver, and I had a over route, and Reed was playing linebacker at the time. And um, I, since I played rugby, I'm used to, you know, wrap up tackles. And I got hit stick, man. I flew about five yards behind the line of scrimmage. And, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was intense. It was, it was a different experience. Irons are now with a 14-point lead as Carpenter goes under center. We'll hand it off to Trevor Carter. Carter picks up a couple blocks from Carrico and Cameron Deer. And it's a nice Carter. gain there. What do you think about Tate and Carpenter, a first-year starting quarterback, only a sophomore leading this offense so far this season? I'm surprised with him. I, I mean, I knew he could do it. I was just afraid early on that he couldn't do with the pressure, but he proved me wrong, and I'm proud for him and well, happy for him, and I expect a lot from him this year. Will come with the same formation. They've also got a blocking tight end on the line of Lincoln, Lincoln Barnes, Ashton Duncan, to the near side of the formation as a tight end as well. They'll run the same play, and it's to Carter. Carter picks up a first down as he gets it Trevor all the way down the to the Carter. Ironton 37-yard line. Trevor Carter, another guy who's really impressed this year, Avery. Yeah, um, I remember his freshman year, I could tell he had a lot of, um, what's the word? You could see that he had a bright future in front of him. I remember when he got the offer from Arkansas, I was super happy for him, and I expect a lot more from him. High formation here as Carpenter's under center. Carrico in the backfield. Hacker and Howell out wide for the Tigers. They'll hand it off to Carrico. Carrico go, breaking Reed. one tackle. Stiff arms the man, and he gets it into Galley Academy territory. Met by several Blue Devils, including Reed Michael Bisi. But it's a big run from Reed Carrico, and Avery, I'm sure you're used to seeing a whole lot of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, the Ridgewood run that he had and ran over that dude, pretty iconic. Probably fires you up a little bit. Oh, man, well. I, was, I was so excited for that game. So for uh, maybe some Ohio State fans who are tuned in just to watch Reed, what are they getting? Uh, in Carrico, who's going to be on campus next year. What's he like? He's a pretty good dude, nice, good to be around, helpful, and just a good dude to be around overall. Hand it off to the fullback Cameron Deer. Deer has a good burst. Maybe not a conventional bulky type Cameron of fullback, but he's a good blocker and very Back. swift and good agile when he takes the handoff. Oh, yeah. He's really fast with the ball in his hand, and I expect a lot from him too in the future. I know the sample size is small, and you don't get those games against, you know, Wheelersburg, Russell, and Ashland this year. But yeah. how do you think this Ironton team stacks up with the rest of the state of Ohio? Do you think they have a chance to make a run? Oh, for sure. I feel like they're going to probably, probably play Ridgewood in the regional finals again if COVID doesn't, you know, get rid of that. Let's knock on wood. We've got some wood oh, yeah. up here. <laughs> but they'll probably play Ridgewood again. Carter in motion. He'll take the pass in the flat. Go. Breaks one tackle and gets another positive gain. Ironton stringing together some offense on this drive. It's another first down for the Tigers. So many weapons on this Ironton team this year, Avery. Oh, yeah, they got they can sub in in almost every position, which we didn't have last year, but a lot of people stepped up this year, and it clearly shows. Let's talk a little bit about uh, how college has gone so far. How, how are you liking it? How have you maybe had to adjust with the uh, virtual classes and things um, like that? I mean, it's all right. I personally don't enjoy it, but I don't learn that way. I have to have a teacher. Fine, but, man. yeah, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. I enjoy being on campus, being with the team and lifting. But, I mean, school, school, and got to get it done. We've got an injury timeout down on the field, so we'll step out and take a break. Big thanks to Avery Book for joining us here on the broadcast. We wish him the best. And Fighting Tiger Nation, make sure you continue to support him throughout his football career. We'll be right back here on the Montown TV Sports Network.
Whether your family is gathering at our house or yours, let Smoke and Jay's make it easy. Smoke and Jay's Ribbon Brew House, located just two miles off I-64 at exit 185 in Ashland, Kentucky. What if I told you there was a place where you didn't need to worry about a dress code or fancy reservation? Oh, and they also had a $10 lunch menu and 40 items under 20 bucks. The Winchester Steak, Seafood, and Bourbon Bar. All flavor and no fuss. Ironton piecing together a, a nice drive here Armstrong. so far. Five plays, 52 yards. James Armstrong was the injured Blue Devil. He's back up on his feet. Good to see for Gallia Academy, a special football player in James Armstrong. Absolutely. Ironton putting together, as we said, a nice drive here, Mike, looking to answer that Gallia Academy I touchdown. think uh, I think what you've seen, you know, they, they did a few things on that last drive. I think Coach Pimpleton finally said, okay, we're going to go back to our bread and butter. We're going to pound the ball on the ground. We're going to run the football hard. We're going to let our linemen do their work, bring in Deer, Carter, Carico, and let them just do their stuff, and that's exactly what they've done on this drive. Big shout-out to Avery Book for joining us on tonight's broadcast. Yeah. Hopefully we'll have him on throughout the season. He brings a lot to us. Yeah. Of course, he knows all these kids after all. Yeah, yeah, it's been great. I mean, he took my headset, but other than that, <laughs> it's been great. Carico, Deer, and Carter in the backfield. Carpenter under center, and they'll hand it off to Carico. Carico dodges one tackle, and then he's brought down by Galley Academy's Braden Easton. Carico, the ball carrier. Yeah, I think you, you've got to you've got to figure that uh, the ball is not going in the air. Sorry, uh, I don't think on this drive they're going to try to drive the ball down. Maybe run some clock. We got 3:44 left in the half. I think you're going to see Ironton just. Uh, Keep it on the ground all the way in, and hopefully we'll score a touchdown. That's what they're what they're looking for. Waverly with a 42-0 lead over Portsmouth West. That's one score update. We'll get you some more at halftime as they'll come with the same formation here and hand it off this time to Trevor Carter. Carter brought down by Gallia Academy's number 32, who does not exist on our roster. <laughs> Shockingly, I'm not surprised that happened to us on a couple of players uh, last week. So uh, that happens occasionally. And, you know, guys switch numbers, come in and out. You know, we apologize that we don't have it, but, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot we can do if we don't have it listed. Third down and four after the three-yard run from Carter. We'll stick with that same formation, trying to run right at Gallia Academy. And they'll hand it off to Carter again. Carter barreling ahead. It looks like he has enough Carter, for the, ball, the first down. Mm -hmm. Zach Hemby, one of the Blue Zach Devils, in to Hemby bring him tackle. down, but not before he picks up another Fighting Tiger first down, gain of five. Give the Fighting Tigers the first down. That first down is brought to you by... 2.45 to Department go now. Bank. Clock rolling as it's a 21-7 Ironton lead. The Tigers... I think also trying to take some time off the clock. Mm -hmm. Don't want to give the ball back to the Blue Devils who elected to receive to start the game. I formation now for Ironton. Two receivers to the far side. Hacker and York and off to Carrico. Carrico puts on a juke move. Carrico into the end zone for the Fighting Tiger. Touchdown, Touchdown. 17 yards. Reed Carrico's third score of the first half. Yeah, that puts him uh, three scores this That's week, three scores you, last week. He's on a pace to break that uh, score. Scores that he had last year, I think he had 23, if I'm not mistaken, 23 touchdowns, and he's got uh, six already on the season. 222 to go here before halftime, so Gallia Academy will get the ball with some time to try and answer that Carrico 17-yard score. Maulmeister on for the extra point for Ironton. And the Fighting Tigers take a 28-7 lead. You're watching high school football here on the Montown TV Sports Network. Whether your family is gathering at our house or yours, let Smoke and Jay's make it easy. Smoke and Jay's Ribbon Brew House, located just two miles off I-64 at exit 185 in Ashland, Kentucky.
What if I told you there was a place where you didn't need to worry about a dress code or fancy reservation? Oh, and they also had a $10 lunch menu and 40 items under 20 bucks. The Winchester Steak, Seafood, and Bourbon Bar. All flavor and no fuss. Seventeen yard Reed Carrico touchdown run. His third score of the first half puts Ireton ahead twenty-eight to seven with two twenty-two to go here in the second quarter. Ben Spicer and Mike Miller. Special thanks to our third commentator and special guest Avery Book for joining us throughout the broadcast. I think Avery had to leave at halftime, but we appreciate him stopping by and talking with us. Updating us on the college life as Maulmeister's kick takes one bounce into the clutches of Michael BC. And BC gets another solid return for mm -hmm. Gallia Academy. BC on the return. Well, I think uh, Gallia Academy here is probably going to want to throw the football. They've had some success throwing the football, but I think they've got to be careful and not, uh, you know, if they, if they get three incompletions really quick, that still gives Ironton some time to get the ball back and maybe put another score on the board before halftime. So, Gallia needs to be uh, uh, do a good job in completing the pass, catching the ball if it's in their area, to try to keep that clock rolling, but also to advance the ball down the field. Gallia Academy, 10 carries, minus six yards on the game. 2.16 to go here first half. Anko back to throw. A little screen out to Armstrong. Armstrong with the catch. Nice move. Sheds the initial Thank tackle, and there's some oh. late contact Armstrong. out of bounds. A costly flag against the Fighting Tigers, Mike. Yeah, it's a little bit of a late hit out of bounds. I think that might be on Carrico, but that's going to add 15 yards uh, to Gallia Academy and put them, you know, close to uh, close to midfield, I believe. Yeah, penalties have been costly in this young season for both of these teams, and that's mm -hmm. something that you can't have if you're looking to make a late postseason push. I think uh, that's Coach Pendleton had talked with us this week, and he said, you know, as a coach, there's always things to clean up, and I think penalties tonight are a thing really for both teams that they need, will need to clean up going forward uh, because you really can't, you know, you don't want to make mistakes that beat you and don't let the other make the other team beat you. 2.12 to go. Vanco takes the snap and steps up to avoid the pressure from Crabtree, gets the completion out to his Ooh. receiver, and Carrico levels him. Woo. That's Donovan Woodson who – Took the shot from Carrico. I'm not sure I would have gotten up after that one. He kind of got put up in the air, and Carrico kind of just uh, put the hit on him pretty hard there. We can hear that one up here, but nice job. Guy Academy picked up seven yards on that play back at uh, on the Ironton side of the 50. The toughest seven-yard gain of Donovan Woodson's <laughs> career. Probably no doubt about that. Armstrong and BC in the backfield with Vanco. It's a second down and three. A minute and a half to go here in the first half. They'll send BC in motion. Vanco back to pass. Vanco in trouble again as he has to elude Crawford. And we've got a flag on the field after the completed pass to Armstrong. Looks like this one's coming back. Armstrong had the first down, yep. but I think there's a flag on the field as Crabtree was grabbed as he was looking to come in and sack the quarterback. Yeah, I think it, oh, it's going to be a – Flags on the play. Looks like he called a push in the back. And, uh, okay, I may not be a great rules person, but that if – if or could have been an illegal use of hands. I'm not sure what he called there, but it, it looks like Holy. a block. That gives Gaia Academy. Regardless, it'll back yeah. Gaia Academy all the way up to their own 32. And, again, penalties. Yes. Costly. After they had the ball across the 50, now they're way back into their own territory. Brings up a second down, 22. Here's the snap to Vanco. Vanco rolling out to his right. Slings one over the middle. He's got the completion to his receiver of Kenyon Franklin. As he gets it out to the Blue Devil, 40. Gain of eight on the play. Makes this third down a little more manageable. Yeah, the issue is right now the clock's running. They're going to have to hustle. Uh, if they want to get down in the field position, coming up on them one minute to go in the second quarter. Both teams with just one timeout remaining here in the first half. 28-7, your score. Gaia Academy and Ironton doing battle in week two of the Ohio high school football season. BC and Armstrong in the backfield. Donovan Woodson, Briar Williams near side of the formation. Looks like Kenyon Franklin to the far side. Vanko steps oh. up, and he's sacked. Will York got in there and made him go down. Will York, Will York, as you said, applying the pressure. It's going to be a loss of about seven yards on the play. 
I think we're going to have a timeout here. Looks like an official timeout. I thought Ironton might be the one calling the timeout, but it looks like there's an official timeout. Fighting Tigers do have one oh, timeout remaining they, now. They'll say they out. did take Ironton. the timeout. Ironton, yeah. 31 seconds to go here as Ironton burns their final timeout. So maybe you try and give Kyle Howe a chance to get a big play in the special teams game, Mike. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I think if uh, he can get a big return, uh, Carpenter has shown that he's very adept uh, at throwing the football, and you might be able to get down, uh, at least be able to give yourself an opportunity to give uh, – uh, Maulmeister, well, an opportunity a for a field goal right before the half. Out on the field. Fourth and 22 coming up for Guy Academy. 36 seconds to go for Tony Payne, tip your hat, my the first half of this one. PA, says, PA uh, gentleman just uh, announced Tony Payne, who just tipped his hat as an official. This is his 50th year officiating football. It's a long time. Yeah, I, he's probably lost a lot of hair being an official because they 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 don't they don't uh, they're not uh, talked about too kindly a lot of times. Geiser on to kick to Kyle Howe with 36 seconds to go here in the first half. Ooh, Ireton nearly got in there and got a hand. He's got on an that opportunity one. here. Howe will field it at his own 35, and here's Kyle Howe putting on a cutback. Howe gets about 12 as he's brought down by multiple Kyle Blue Devil Howell defenders. Return nice return, got it back, back to about Howell. midfield. You've, Ironton's Devils. probably got about um, probably three plays here maybe at most, two. Uh, two to three plays. They don't have any timeouts left, so you got to figure they're, you know they're going to go to the air, uh, and I think they've probably got time to maybe make three plays here. Good starting field position here right around midfield for the Tigers, but how aggressive do you get with a 21-point yeah. lead and a sophomore quarterback making just his second start I think, of his I, career? Yeah, I think you see what we can get here, see if you can get a big play, and I think that's going to be a penalty. Yep. The yeah, Ironton had a substitution infraction. They broke the huddle with 12 guys, yep. so that Illegal. backs them up five yards and now it really comes into question do you take a chance with it being first and 15. Yeah. I think you take a chance here and if you can pick up 20 yards I'm not sure what Maulmeister's uh, range is but if you could pick up 15 20 yards here on this play you got an opportunity if not then I think you just run out the clock. Carpenter looking to throw and he'll get it out to his receiver Trent Hacker who wisely tiptoes that sideline and then steps out of bounds. Yeah that only took about five seconds there nice job by Ironton. We'll get it into Gallia Academy territory, it looked Brody like, down to the Blue Devil 46. So again, yeah. 14 there. Yeah, I think if you can get, uh, you're at the 46, if you maybe get 20 to 25 yards here, I think you got an opportunity for a field goal. Because he stepped out of bounds, of course, the mm -hmm. clock stops. We'll send a man in motion, that's Masters Carpenter, back looking to throw. They'll come with a screen to Carico. Carico picks up some blocks downfield, and he gets a solid gain. Yeah, I he's think going he out stayed. of bounds, too. They'll say he went out of bounds. Yeah. He gets a 12-yard gain. Excuse me, a 14-yard gain. And they've got uh, 11 seconds on the 32. I think you've got time for maybe one more pass play if you can get out of bounds or a first down. Run that field goal unit on, and you got a chance for a field goal here right before the half. Nice job by Ironton with, what was it, 25 seconds or so when they got the ball. So, Nice job by them getting the ball down the field. Good clock management from Coach Trevin Pendleton. No less miles type no. clock management <laughs> on display. I just had to throw that out there because yeah. Zach's up here with us. <laughs> Louisiana guy, you know. I understand. I understand. <laughs> Twin receivers to both sides. Carpenter in the shotgun. Carico joins him in the backfield. Carpenter Going looking deep. right, and he's got a man. Oh. And the catch almost made but it's wow. through the hands of the fighting tiger receiver what a throw wow from carpenter yeah i mean uh, i've been impressed with carpenter so far this season he's got an arm on him and he's he's been really accurate so far uh almost completed that touchdown uh to will york i think that you may see him go again for that i think that was uh, the same route that york ran on his touchdown score <laughs> last week it, against it, looked, it looked very very similar very similar he made a great catch down there to score that touchdown and just about came up with another one today. Personnel swapping here on this second down and 10 from the 32. Kerko in the backfield. Masters and Hacker out far side of the formation. Wilson and Howell to the near side. Two receivers both sides. Carpenter back to throw again. He's going to sling another one over the middle of the field. The catch is made by Hacker. 
but he comes up just short of a touchdown score. He's brought down at the three. Good defense to preserve nice this 28-7 score by yeah. Gallia Academy. That's where we go to halftime. It's 28-7. to Ironton leading. Fighting Tigers will get the ball when we start the score, third quarter. You're watching Ohio High School seven. Football here on the My Town TV Sports Network. Tigers. Credit unions are not real banks. Is that so? They are like secret societies with a rigorous process to join. <laughs> there are a lot of misconceptions about credit unions when in fact there are credit unions for everyone. What makes us different from other banks is that our members have a voice and our profits come back to you. At Members Choice Credit Union, you're a name, not a number. This is Joel Dooley with Avanti Clean. Do you have a mold problem, flooding or water problems? The air ducts in your home or business need clean. I have a team of licensed and trained professionals ready to answer any home problem you may be having. Call us today at 606-331-5001 or find us online at avanticlean.com. We're back and we're taking a look at the All-Star Orthopedics team and Sarah, it comes as no surprise we're honoring the squad at SOMC. Yeah, that's right, Chris. And you know, with nearly 70 years of combined experience, these guys bring big city skills to hometown care. We're talking surgical specialties in hip, knee, shoulder, wrist, foot, and ankle. And it all happens right in Portsmouth. The all-star orthopedics team of SOMC, a true home field advantage. Quality Marathon Gasoline, great monthly specials on snacks and beverages, and fantastic service. Those are the qualities of Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shops are a division of the John W. Clark Oil Company. Clark's Pump and Shop, return, return refresh, refuel. At Ashland Credit Union, things are a little bad. backwards. We believe financial empowerment is important at any age. Okay, Sally. I've been going over this month's budget. Looks like I'm going to get ice cream every day now. Welcome back in here on the MyTown TV Sports Network. Ironton with a nice lead here as they've taken a 28-7 advantage into the locker room. Uh, one thing we'll see, I think, in a lot of places is uh, the visitors out on the field yeah. for halftime, and Spaced such is the out. case for Gallia Academy, yeah. spread out following the COVID-19 protocols. Uh, nice first half, though, for the Fighting Tigers. As we said, they lead by 21 here at the break. Yeah, uh, they picked up uh, again right where they left off last week, especially in the first quarter there, uh, and did a great job moving the football, running and passing. But uh, I got to give Gaggy Academy credit. They got down 21 to nothing, but they didn't quit and was able to hit that big uh, touchdown pass from Vanco to Briar Williams there, I believe it was about 81 yards, uh, and that got them back in the game, got them excited, got some positive momentum for Gallia Academy. Thought there towards the end of the first half you were going to – they were able going to be able to get down there and possibly score again, but uh, Ironton was a little too tough, got the ball back, and uh, they added that touchdown, made it 28-7, to and almost got in right before the half. Uh, but uh, I think there's a possible – you know, I, this is still a football game. I mean, Gallia Academy can come back. They've done some good jobs in the passing game. They've got to do a better job stopping the run against Ironton because uh, Ironton's been able to run on them pretty good. Uh, but, uh, you know, Ironton's been impressive, but Gallia Academy's got some talent and can get back in this game. We're watching high school football on the Montown TV Sports Network. We'll have some stats, unofficial stats, that is, when we return from this commercial break right here on the Montown TV Sports Network. Quality Marathon Gasoline. Great monthly specials on snacks and beverages and fantastic service. Those are the qualities of Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shops are a division of the John W. Clark Oil Company. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Return. Refresh. Refuel. Here at Infusion Solutions, one of the things that we're most proud of is the relationship that we develop with our patients. From the people on the phone to the delivery drivers, I mean, these people are a part of my life. They take care of me. I would recommend Infusion Solutions to anybody. Discover what we're all about right now at Infusion Solutions. 
At Ashland Credit Union, things are a little backwards. As a strong supporter of youth education, Ashland Credit Union is the only area bank or credit union providing funds to six participating schools for every qualifying debit card swipe made. This is Joel Dooley with AvantiClean. Do you have a mold problem, flooding, or water problems? The air ducts in your home or business need clean. I have a team of licensed and trained professionals ready to answer any home problem you may be having. Call us today at 606-331-5001 or find us online at avantaclean.com. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Gillum Drug, 1237 Carter Avenue, Ashland, is a locally owned pharmacy devoted to providing excellent customer service, not found at the chain drug stores, and Gillum Drug will treat you like family. Stop by today and experience it. Gillum Drug, next to Domino's. We're here at halftime at Tanks Memorial Stadium, Ironton, with a 28-7 lead here over the visiting Gallia Academy Blue Devils. Let's look at some unofficial team and individual statistics here. Coming your way, Ironton with 16 first downs in that first half, uh, 23 runs for 147 yards. Carpenter, 6 for 10 passing for 139 yards and a score. The Tigers one for three on third down, one for one on fourth down. For Gallia Academy, just five first downs. The big stat that stands out, 11 runs for minus 13 yards. Ouch. Eight for 15 passing is Vanco for 161 yards and a touchdown. Of course, uh, that 81 of those came on the touchdown score to Williams. Eight penalties for the Blue Devils. They are just two of nine on third down. Looking at some individual statistics for Ironton. Trevor Carter with five carries for 33 yards. Reed Carrico has 10 runs for 80 yards and three touchdowns. Cameron Deer with three rushes for 29. Kyle Howe, one carry for four yards. Landon Wilson, one for zero. And Tayden Carpenter, two for zero. Again, Carpenter, six for 10 passing, 139 yards and a touchdown. Aaron Masters, had the 54-yard touchdown reception. Trent Hacker, two catches for 41 yards. Cameron Deer with one for 23. Reed Carrico with one for 14. And Trevor Carter with one for seven. For Galley Academy, Briar Williams, the wide receiver, the leading rusher, two runs for 21 yards. James Armstrong, seven for minus seven. And Noah Vanco, the quarterback, two for minus 27. He's been sacked twice. Vanco, as we said, eight for 15 for 161 yards and a touchdown, and receiving stats for the Blue Devils. Briar Williams with three catches for 96 yards and a touchdown. Michael B.C. with one grab for 40 yards. James Armstrong with two for 10. Kenyon Franklin, one for eight. And Donovan Woodson, one catch for seven yards. 28-7, to seven, Ironton leading here at halftime. We'll go to our final commercial break, and we'll come back and get you squared away for the second half right here on the Mytown TV Sports Network. Quality Marathon Gasoline, great monthly specials on snacks and beverages, and fantastic service. Those are the qualities of Clark's Pump and Shop. Clark's Pump and Shops are a division of the John W. Clark Oil Company. Clark's Pump and Shop, return, return. refresh, refuel. Here at Infusion Solutions, one of the things that we're most proud of is the relationship that we develop with our patients. From the people on the phone to the delivery drivers, I mean, these people are a part of my life. They take care of me. I would recommend Infusion Solutions to anybody. Discover what we're all about right now at Infusion Solutions. At Ashland Credit Union, things are a little backwards. As a strong supporter of youth education, Ashland Credit Union is the only area bank or credit union providing funds to six participating schools for every qualifying debit card swipe made. 
This is Joel Dooley with Avanti Clean. If you have a mold problem, flooding or water problems, the air ducts in your home or business need clean. I have a team of licensed and trained professionals ready to answer any home problem you may be having. Call us today at 606-331-5001 or find us online at avanticlean.com. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Gillum Drug, 1237 Carter Avenue, Ashland, is a locally owned pharmacy devoted to providing excellent customer service, not found at the chain drug stores, and Gillum Drug will treat you like family. Stop by today and experience it. Gillum Drug, next to Domino's. Twenty-eight to seven, Ironton leading here at halftime. Let's look at some other halftime scores from around the area. Wheelersburg with a twenty-one to fourteen lead at the break over Memphis, and it's Waverly all over Portsmouth West, forty-nine to zero in that contest. Here, as we said, twenty-eight to seven, Ironton leading in this one. The Tigers have looked good in all phases of the game once again here in week two. Mike Miller to get out to a 21-point lead they, at halftime. Yeah, they, they have. Uh, I, I, what, one thing that I would say, and I'm sure Coach Pendleton's not happy about it, is some of the penalties that Ironton has had here in the first half have been some big ones that have allowed Gallia Academy to get down the field. Uh, had a late hit that got that. Gallia Academy didn't score, but was able to push the football down uh, the field. So, And that penalties have been that way for both teams tonight, a little sloppy, uh, a couple of late hits, a couple of holds, those types of things. Ironton jumped off sides three times in the first half there. I'm sure that's something Coach Pendleton wants to clean up. Other than that, I think they've looked very crisp. Uh, you know, look mid-season form here in game two. I think you'll see second half, you'll see Ironton – really go to the ground game uh, again just as they did to the end of the first half. That's the way they're really moving the football. Uh, they're going to be difficult uh, to stop in the run game uh, this season just like they were last year. That's going to be their bread and butter. But I think Carpenter does a great job in being able to uh, throw the football and, and is able to be very accurate uh, when he throws the football. For Gallia Academy, I think they've done really well but been able to move the football throwing. But I think – I think it's going to be very uh, important to start this second half. Ironton receives the kickoff. It's going to be very important, I believe, for Gallia to get them off the field without them scoring. You know, Even if you give up a first down or two, it's going to be important to not allow Ironton to score on this first possession of the second half and hopefully get the football back and go down and score and, and get back in the football game just two scores down. One thing I was very concerned about with all the COVID protocols that we have in place, and you'll see the graphic on screen there, some of the things that you have to take into consideration as outlined and mandated by the NFHS and the OHSAA. I was really worried that we wouldn't see the million-dollar marching band. I was too. And I think it's safe to say, and, and I have a right to comment on marching bands because <laughs> I went to Estill <laughs> County, who has one of the best yes, bands very much uh, so. in the nation, frankly. Yes, yes. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, but the million-dollar marching band right up there as well, they are outstanding and awesome. Uh, but some of the COVID protocols, of course, you see that beanbag in between plays. That kind of threw us yep. off last week. I wanted to thank all the fans who commented and let us know uh, what yes. was going on with that. Of course, you've got social distancing on the sideline. All coaches must wear a mask throughout yeah. as well. Uh, Mike, a, a stat that really jumped out to me, and we talked about uh, James Armstrong coming into this game, and we saw what he did last week uh, against South Point. So far tonight, just seven carries for minus seven yards. He's made some plays in other aspects of the game, but haven't been able to get him going on the ground. Ironton's defense has really done a nice job of keying in on him. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. I think that was a big key for Ironton Half coming in was, was Armstrong. Rock Hill seven, Chesapeake three. Rock Hill leads Chesapeake seven to three at halftime. You're good. I was going to say I just was going to see that, but anyway, uh, they did a great job uh, corralling Armstrong. Gallia Academy tried to get him into the game by throwing the ball into the flat uh, and trying to get him going that way. He still had a little bit of a difficult time, but I think uh, Gallia Academy uh, in this second half, you know, most football people will say you you run to set up the pass. I think they're going to have to pass to maybe set up the run uh, here in the second half and maybe get a little creative, put a couple of wrinkles in there, maybe even see a draw play or two. Uh, I would like to see how Ironton would react to that because 
when Gallia Academy goes back to pass, Ironton's really coming hard after that quarterback. You might be able to slip a draw right up in there and gain some positive yards. But Gallia Academy's thing is they got to play defense here in the first. The big half. thing for the Blue Devils, you can't abandon the run. No. Although you're down by 21, a couple late Gallia Academy players running out from the locker room. We did have some players go to the locker room. Yes. We want to correct ourselves. <laughs> yeah. It was funny when you said that, and then I said, look, half the team's going yeah, right to the locker, to the locker room now. <laughs> Geyser's got it teed up, and we're set to begin the third quarter here with Ironton leading 28-7. to Al Carrico, and looks like – who is that out there, Mike? 29, 29. I believe. That's Terrence West out there. Interesting to see three deep on a kickoff. You don't see that very often. West had a nice return last week at Portsmouth. That was negated by a penalty. Ball bounces into uh -oh. the hands of Reed Carrico. Fills it at the 13. Carrico up the middle of the field. Look puts out. on a nice juke move. And here goes Reed Carrico crossing into Gallia Academy territory. Finally wrestled over to the sideline by Donovan Woodson, but not before he gets a wow. big game to start the second half. The Nothing against Carrico, but you wouldn't expect him to be a big kickoff returner. But he came through. They The, the return team blocked that really well. Carrico came right up the middle, cut off of that uh, block to the left there. They set up a wall. He went down the sidelines. Huge return for Ironton. Just what Gallia Academy did not need to start this half. Ironton will start it at the Gallia Academy 23. Ironton looking to add to their 21-point advantage. Pistol formation. They'll hand it off to Cameron Deer. And referees this time, Cameron Deer had the ball. Cameron yeah, Deere yeah, they got the that one right here. that time. and blew it, blew it dead when he went down. Uh, really missed that one uh, in there in the second quarter. Was really hurt Ironton on a big play when Carpenter pulled that ball. Second down and eight after the two-yard run from the fullback. Ironton at the Blue Devil 21. Leading this one 28 to 7 with 11.20 to go, third quarter. Pistol formation, H back of Ashton Duncan and on the right side of that line. And it's a little uh -oh. RPO here, and here goes Carpenter. Carpenter inside the 10 yard line, all the way down to the Blue Devil six on that carry. Nice job by Carpenter. You thought he was going to throw, and, he, and when he decided to run, he decided to run. There wasn't any hesitation on that. He had a receiver that was partially open, but he saw a lot of green in front of him, so he just pulled it down and took off. Very decisive action by him, and that turned into a big gain for Ironton. 21 yards on the carry. Excuse me, 15 yards. And math's hard sometimes. The math is hard, yeah. We're, this is only our second game, Ben. We, we, math will come. Math will come. I went to Greenwood County. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Toss to Trevor Carter. Carter picks up a great block from Carrico. And Carter, did he get in? Oh, They'll spot him nope. just short. short. Three-yard run from Trevor, Trevor Carter. Carter just short of scoring there was Carter. But great job, as you mentioned, on the play there by Carrico blocking out in front. All the way out in the flat onto the wide side of the field, he did a really good job there, and I thought was going to be enough for Carter to get into the end zone, but referee said he was just short. I should correct myself. Green County's come a long way. They were not a very good academic school when I went there, though. <laughs> Second down and goal now. Carpenter under center. And he'll hand it off to Carrico. Carrico touchdown. looking for touchdown number four, and he's in. Nice Not. run there from Reed Carrico for his fourth score of the night. Tough way to start the half by Gallia Academy. Touchdown, that was probably, Reed. I think that was Carico. probably three or four plays after the big kickoff return, and Ironton goes up four touchdowns. 10.57 to go in the third quarter. Ironton with the big kickoff return from Reed Carrico. It's only right that they feed the big man and give him yeah. his fourth score of the night. Molmeister on for the extra point. How to hold. And it's 35-7 to seven Ironton here in well, the third quarter. Fighting Tigers, Blue nice Devils on here on the Mottown TV Sports Kyle Network. We'll be right back. Good job. Whether your family is gathering at our house or yours, let Smoke and Jays make it easy. Smoke and Jays Ribbon Brew House, located just two miles off I-64 at exit 185 in Ashland, Kentucky.
What if I told you there was a place where you didn't need to worry about a dress code or fancy reservation? Oh, and they also had a $10 lunch menu and 40 items under 20 bucks. The Winchester, steak, seafood, and bourbon bar. All flavor and no fuss. Back in on the My Town TV Sports Network, 35 to seven Ironton, your score. The Tigers come out of the gates at halftime, put together a solid drive, and Reed Carrico caps it off after a big kick return. Well, do you, do you say that it was an Ironton drive or just a Reed Carrico drive? Because he had, I don't know what was, 60 yards or so on the kickoff return and then was able to run two more runs uh, out of the next four plays and put it in the end zone. So. Uh, he's got a fantastic start to his senior year and a tough way to start the second half for the Blue Devils. Armstrong and BC back to return for Gallia Academy. Mollmeister hesitates a little bit. Now angles it over to the side. Armstrong picks it up inside the 10. Now coming back middle of the field, picks up a block on the edge, stiff arms, an Ironton defender, but he's brought down by a whole bunch of black jerseys, and now we've got some flags down on the field as well. First hit by Kyle Howell. Then brought down by Will that's, York. that's the second time tonight that Kyle House helmets come on. Meadows. I don't know if he needs to tighten his chin strap or if he's uh, Flags on just the play. getting in his, on some hits that are that are just uh, that tough. Penalty was on the Tigers. Horse collar. It'll be a horse collar tackle. So that helps out Gallia Academy's yeah. calls a little bit because they had sparred the ball at about the seven. <laughs> yeah, they've they've had a tough time tonight in their starting field position. Um, you know, they were going to be inside the 10, I think, for at least the second time tonight. But here they are out at the 22-yard line, 23-yard line to start this drive. The first and 10 for the Blue Devils, the ball on their own, 22-yard line. Shotgun formation for Van Co. Blue Devils trailing 35 to seven here. 10:47 to go in the Going third quarter. Over the head uh, of Reed Carico, almost got a paw on that one. Donovan as Woodson, Woodson the intended complete. receiver, but they couldn't connect. And Williams had uh, run a flag pattern down here, cut off there. Looked like he might have been able to beat the deep safety there, but he went short. Third quarter uh, score. There to Woodson. Ten. Rock Hill seven. Chesapeake leading Rock Hill 10 to seven in the third quarter. Here it's 35 to seven, Ironton with the advantage. Vanco looking to throw, rolls out to his left. Vanco deep. keeping his eyes upfield. That one, a jump ball, and Ironton nearly had the interception. That was Uriah Van Meadows in coverage. Up in there by Uriah Meadows. We talked about yeah. Gallia Academy not abandoning the run. They're obviously going to throw it here, you would assume, on a third yeah. down and ten. And they're about to quickly, if they don't pick up a first down, give Ironton yeah. the ball right back. And, and used only may, less than 30 seconds on the clock. I mean, you, you're trying to get back in the football game. I know you got to throw, but you've also got to keep the ball out of the other team's hands. And uh, they've really got to get a first down here. 10.34 to go third quarter now. Third down and ten for the Blue Devils to send BC in motion. Trying that screen pass to Armstrong, and this time Dalton Crabtree read it like a book. Yeah. Might have got a yard, but it's not going to get anywhere Dalton near first down yard. No, and he wound up going out of bounds, and that's going to stop the clock again. Uh, you know, and, and uh, nice idea, uh, you know, if they could have gotten uh, past Crabtree there. But, uh, you know, Gallia's, Gallia's just struggling right now uh, to get some positive yardage. Good job by the Ironton defense. I think they felt like they knew they were going to throw. Uh, to try to get back in the football game, but now you're going to give Ironton a uh, good starting field position more than likely on this uh, on this drive. Should be about midfield or into Gallia territory once this punt returns. An completed. 11 second drive, Mike. 11 seconds. Wow. Gallia Academy's Caleb Geiser on to punt again, and it's How back to return, but we've got a delay of game on the Blue Devils, and that'll. Back up Gallia Academy yeah. even more. Have an 11 second drive and then get a five yard penalty to push you back even further. Uh, with no time coming off the clock, more than likely Ironton's going to get the ball on Gallia Academy side of the 50. Uh, just a tough way to try to stay in a football game. Uh, already down 35 to seven. Fourth and 17 now after the penalty. So we'll try this again. How now standing in near the Tiger logo at midfield. Short punt. Yeah. How can have to field it? Bobbles it and spins oh. off a tackle. Look at Kyle Howe. Howe off He's to the races. And he cuts back inside and scores. Kyle
Kyle Howe with a punt return wow. touchdown. How about that, Mike? That was amazing. I thought for sure he was going to get down. He slipped out of the tackle of two Gallia Academy Blue Devils and then finished that punt return for a touchdown. What a great athletic play by Kyle Howe. That shows you I call him kind of the all-everything player for Ironton. He played backup quarterback a little last year. As you can see, he's going to hold on the extra points, is the punter, and is also a receiver and can run out of the backfield. He kind of does it all. I think he was playing in the band at halftime, too, for <laughs> Ironton. Kick is up and good. 42-7, to seven, Ironton. 10-16 to go here in the third quarter. We'll be right back. Gallia Academy will have the ball when we return here on the My Town TV Sports Network. Wow. Man writes, if you like boneless wings, you dirty. Not anymore. B-dubs completely reinvented their boneless wings. Now they're marinated and packed with so much meat, it doesn't make sense. Get here for the new boneless wings. Buffalo Wild Wings. Roar! Time clock. Ironton with a 35-point lead. Now that starts a running clock. Not the result uh, I expected, frankly, coming no. into this game, Mike. But Ironton, again, dominating in all three phases of the game following that 37-yard uh, Kyle Howell punt return touchdown. Yeah, that was just an amazing play. I mean, that was all Kyle Howell. I mean, there it was some blocking, but he, he slipped those two tackles there and then made the, the run to the end zone. Uh, just outstanding play by Kyle Howell. Kickoff from Maulmeister over to Armstrong. Armstrong fills it at his own three, takes it back to the middle of the field and tries to put on a juke move, but a whole lot of Jesus Ironton players there Armstrong to bring him return. down. He might have gotten about 15 on the return. Yeah. Evan Wilde. Big thanks again to what? Zach Clemmy for Take helping us out with some tackle. statistics throughout the broadcast. Yeah. Can we Make just sure have him every well. week because he's really helped out I a lot? I hope so. <laughs> Make sure you check out his recap of tonight's contest and tomorrow's Ashland Daily Independent in print or online. And follow along for his updates on Twitter as well. Sports editor now at the Ashland Daily Independent. Couldn't find anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> he said they couldn't find anyone else. No, he does a great job. We're thankful to have him. We have a, a lot of great media uh, in the tri-state area. Absolutely. Of course, Jason Philly, all longtime announcer here with the mm -hmm. Ironton Fighting Tiger, does an awesome job. In my opinion, he's the best announcer in the Tri-State. Uh, and then you've got Jim Walker, who's been here for a long time at the Ironton Tribune as well, who's outstanding. Van Co in the pistol set looking to pass, and he has Briar Williams wide open. Uh. Williams catches it, or Williams catches it, but stumbles after the five-yard game. Yeah, and I, I, you mentioned we have a, a lot of great uh, media here in the area. There's no doubt about that, and I'm sure they're like, like I am and you are, Ben. We are just excited to be able to bring you football uh, here this fall because it's been so up in the air. We never know from week to week if we're going to have a game or not, and we're just excited that we're here we are two weeks in a row calling uh, the Ironton Fighting Tigers. We're going to be really busy at My Town TV next week with the return of fall sports beginning on oh. Monday. Hand off to Armstrong. James he is swallowed up. Ashton Duncan, Nate Cochran, Dalton Crabtree among the Ironton defenders in there Dalton to make Crabtree. the stop. Yeah, there was just there was nothing there for Armstrong. It's Unfortunately for Gallia Academy, that's the way the run game has been pretty much all night since we kicked this game off. Uh, you know, just not a lot of room. Gallia has been able to make some yardage throwing the football, but uh, as we talked at the beginning of the show, uh, or at the beginning of the game, uh, Coach Pendleton said wanted to make a team one-dimensional, and that's what they've done tonight. Empty formation for Vanco on a third down and nine. Vanco rolling out to his left. Flags fly as Vanco chucks one deep downfield. Couldn't come up with the Vancouver catch. The intended receiver intended downfield was Zach Belleville. And, again, we've got flags down yeah, on the field. I think we've got at least two holds on Gallia Academy going the opposite direction just like they have several times tonight. 
Uh, it's got to be uh, very frustrating uh, for Gallia Academy. Penalty is declined. So Ironton with a, another defensive stand as they have a 42-7 lead here with under 7.5 to go in the third quarter. Running clock the rest of the way in this one as Ironton will get the ball back this time. It's a new return man deep, Landon Wilson, the Geyser Fighting Tiger the sophomore. For the Blue Devils, Landon Geyser's Wilson. punt a little Back short deep. last time. Kyle Howe took Tigers. it 37 yards for a score. That's the most recent Ironton touchdown. We'll have a scoring summary for you at the end of the game. Seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Another short punt. That one might have been partially blocked and fielding it for Ironton was Lincoln Barnes. I think he caught that at about the 20-yard line, so I think Barnes that was a three-yard punt, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. So another drive mm -hmm. that starts in prime field position for Ironton. They'll get it at the Blue Devil 15. Now you see we talked with Avery about it and special teams coming into play. Kyle huge with the punt return huge touchdown. And then yes. the, uh, I'm going to say that was deflected because it looked like it. looked like it, yeah. But once it, once that it was left a, the foot, it, it took a weird spin. Yeah. They, Ironton's been close to getting it on. It seems like Gallia Academy doesn't put their punter as deep as some other teams. Carpenter sends Carico in motion. Then they oh. come with the little shovel pass to Ashton Duncan, but they're waiting Ashton on it with Duncan Zach Hemby for Gallia Academy. Good read on yes. that play. I like that play as a Florida Gator fan, the little inside oh, yeah. shovel pass yeah, to the sure tight end. I'm sure you do. That, it's, it's an effective play, but Zach Hemby uh, had it sniffed out there and did a good job of hanging on and uh, actually uh, causing a one-yard loss for the Tigers. Brings up a second down, 11 now. 5.45 to go here in the third quarter. Ironton looking to add on to their 35-point lead. Starting with good field position, although they went backwards on their first play from scrimmage. Carpenter now in a shotgun. As he's got York and Wilson to the near side. Hacker to the far side. Looking over the middle oh. of the field and finding his receiver of Landon Wilson. Wilson gets it down to the five-yard line for a gain of 11 and a first down. That was a good job by Carpenter. He was rolling to his right-hand side. We talked earlier in the game. He, he had a tough pass down here on the other end to Cameron Deer when he was rolling out to his right-hand side. He was able to stop, set his feet, and be able to complete that pass to Wilson there inside the five. Seems comfortable making that play. Hey, mm -hmm. Reed Carico has four rushing touchdowns. Will they go for number five with him here? It's Carpenter under center. No, instead they'll give it to the fullback Cameron Deer, and Deer with Cameron a Deere short the gain. They'll carrier. say he got about a yard on that carry up the middle. Yeah, I, I would expect uh, you know I would expect Carico to get the call here. You know we, we saw it last yeah, week. He did it three times. We've got as you said four times tonight. Uh, I, I would expect to see him get the ball here, and I would expect this may be the last. Uh, drive for the first team offense for Ironton with four and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. Officially a gain of two timeout on the field taken by the Tigers with 4.22 to go here timeout. in Ironton. the third quarter and perhaps Coach Pendleton looking to make those substitutions now. We'll see. We'll see. We saw Ironton late in the game last week had a chance to score as they were marching down in Trojan territory and they just took a knee. Yes. So good sportsmanship on display yeah, last week and right in the fourth quarter and and you know they yeah I would expect it I would expect his first team to stay in here finish this drive uh, if if they finish it with a score and then you may start seeing um, some substitutions for Ironton and possibly for Gallia as well. So Coach Pendleton and Coach Penron talking it over with Ironton and Gallia Academy, respectively. 4.22 to go here in the third quarter. Ironton returns to action next week here at mm -hmm. home as a take on Cole Grove. Mike will have some new announcers joining yeah. him. Yeah. Uh, I'll be Listen down in Carter County, Gallia Kentucky Academy. for East well, and West Carter. Uh, but you'll be joined by Chris so Pullum and Tyler Rowland. Chris and you and Brian Barber called Carter Ironton Island. games last year, mm -hmm. so a familiar voice for Ironton. I, I joked with Chris, I said, you're gonna get Fighting Tigers nation's hopes up <laughs> when you're coming back here on the call just yeah. to go and do other games Absolutely. after that. Absolutely, well, and we've also on uh, My Town Network next week, we've got Bath County at Boyd County uh, and uh, Raceland will entertain the state, 1A state champion Pikeville Panthers on Saturday the 12th. 
Carpenter under center. Let's see if Reed Carico can get rushing touchdown number five. No, it's going to be a oh, keeper. Now oh, a little rollout throwback. and a throw to Dalton Crabtree. Wow. Look at that play from Ironton oh, out of the timeout. Man. Had Galley Academy it's fooled, and it's a touchdown for the Fighting Tigers. What a great play by Carpenter. He sold it and stopped and was able to get the ball back. And a great, great catch by Crabtree. Uh, I mean, Ironton firing on all cylinders here tonight again. 48-7 to seven your score now as Ironton's Tayden Carpenter, the first-year starting quarterback, gets his second touchdown throw of the night. Mollmeister on for the extra point with 4.15 to go now here in the third quarter. Mollmeister remains perfect on Jimmy the season on PATs. It's 49-7. to seven. Ironton will be back after this commercial break here on the My Town TV Sports Network. This is Joel Dooley with AvantiClean. If you have a mold problem, flooding, or water problems, the air ducts in your home or business need clean. I have a team of licensed and trained professionals ready to answer any home problem you may be having. Call us today at 606-331-5001 or find us online at AvantiClean.com. At Ashland Credit Union, things are a little backwards. We believe financial empowerment is important at any age. Okay, Sally. I've been going over this month's budget. Looks like I can get ice cream every day now. Join the crew of Cross Section, Chris Pullum, Mike Miller, Brian Barber, live from the MyTown TV studios as they talk local, regional, and national sports. Go to Facebook.com slash MyTownTV Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Great job by the Ironton cheerleaders and dance team over on that home mm -hmm. side. They've had a lot to cheer about tonight, Mike. Uh, no doubt about that. I mean, this is... Uh, this has been Ironton from start to finish, just about 49-7 to seven here with 4.15 to go in the third quarter. All Ironton, just like last week, uh, you know, against the Gallia Academy team that came in here to Ironton Tanks Memorial Stadium and beat Ironton here two years ago. Friar Williams, James Armstrong back deep to return. Flags and on a the penalty play. flag offside. will blow that one dead, an offside penalty against Ironton. Why the ball's coming back. How about a big hand yeah. for our cheerleaders? They do a great he must job have heard you there, The PA guy must have heard you about the cheerleaders. One of the few things that seems like that Ironton's done tonight is some penalties. Uh, Five-yard penalty here Alabama. on the offsides on the kickoff. They'll move that back to the 35. Uh, as you mentioned, Cole Grove uh, will come in to Tanks Memorial Stadium next week. I'm uh, looking forward to that game. Uh, you know, uh, just down the road about – it's probably less than a 10-minute bus ride. Uh, from Cold Grove over here to Ironton. So it should be an exciting game uh, next week. And again, another OVC game as that's the only regular season games Ironton's playing or all Ohio schools are playing this year. Low kick fielded by Armstrong at the 20. Armstrong now busting out to the far sideline. And he gets a positive return here as he's out to around the 40 yard line. So the Blue Devils in business here with some solid field position on the 21 yard return from Armstrong. Yeah, absolutely. One of the best field, starting field positions they've had all night. Um, you know, we'll get to see. Hopefully, maybe they can make Jack some some positive tackle. yardage here. They, as they, as we've said, they've struggled most of the evening uh, trying to move the football, hit the one big 81-yard touchdown. Other than that, uh, have really struggled to move the football, especially on the ground. I think they're still in negative yardage, if I'm not mistaken, or if they're not in negative, they're very close. Three and a half minutes to go here, third quarter. Ironton with a 42-point lead. Vanco and Armstrong in the backfield, quarterback and running back respectively. Armstrong to the left hip of Vanco. Three down linemen for the Tigers. They send Williams in motion, fake the handoff to him, and hand it off to Armstrong. Armstrong brought down by who else but Reed Carrico after a gain of about two yards. Yeah, they've actually made a little bit of positive yardage, but I, I think uh, Armstrong, I think at, at halftime he was in a, a negative a negative uh, total yards, and it looks like Armstrong's holding that left arm just a little bit coming off of the off of the field, so I'm not sure if he well, – He's a warrior. He yeah, overcame he, an injury last year, didn't play in the Ironton game last year, and we saw him get hurt tonight. He was able to fight his way through that. Could have been what they call a lot of times a little stinger injury. He might have got hit on the shoulder. Good carry that time from Michael BC as BC is just Michael a yard BC shy of the carry. first down. He gets it out to the 49. 
It looks like we might have a maybe a, maybe a cramp Cochran. with a I'm not sure with an Ironton player. It's number 12, it's Masters. Aaron Masters, yeah. No, it looks like an ankle maybe. We hope Masters is okay. Aaron Masters? Some subs starting to come on for Ironton. Several new players in. Erickson Barnes now playing defense. We've seen Landon Wilson throughout this one. Uriah Meadows in. He's been in much of this second half. Will York. You've also got Terrence West. And Angelo Owen Washington Eisen. is in there as well. So some new faces for the Fighting Tigers. Lincoln Barnes playing some defense. Cameron Deer the out there as well. Reed Carrico still out on the field as well. Third down and one. 2.27 to go here, third quarter. Guy Academy looking to pick up the first down. BC still in the backfield. And he'll take the handoff, and, and he is met get the first right away. There. Jacob Sloan Michael with a tackle for loss. Carrier, Jacob Sloan on the tackle. Lost several on that one. It'll bring up a fourth down and six. Five-yard loss on the play, Mike. Yeah, I mean, you, you would have thought they, they were trying to get that one yard right up the middle with BZ, who, who had had the nice run on the, the play before, but Ironton just sniffed that out and was ready for it. Uh, here you got fourth down. Looks like Gallia Academy is going to go for it here on fourth and six. Yeah, offense still on the field. New running back in the backfield is Hunter Shamblin, a freshman. Trips to the far side, one receiver near side. It's Vanco back to throw. Vanco slinging one to his receiver, and the catch is made. A couple nice moves put on by Donovan nice. Woodson, and nice. Woodson's nice. into Fighting Tiger Complete. territory all the way to the Ironton the 42. Woodson. Picks up the first down there. Good job by Carico on the tackle. Woodson on that catch and run. Made a couple of nice moves there. Under two minutes to go now, third quarter. Ironton in control here of this one and will improve to 2-0 and on the season. Galley Academy will fall to 1-1. One and one. Vanco again joined by Hunter Shamblin in the backfield. I'll hand it off to Shamblin. Shamblin running left, got past one Ironton defender, and then was met by Reed Carico. If I'm a freshman, I don't think I want to be hit by Reed Carico. Yeah. Shamblin pops right back up. Yeah. Yeah. And Will York. Well, as a freshman, since uh, Carico's a senior, this is the only time he'll have to see him. Uh, he won't be able. He won't be seeing him next year. Thank goodness. But uh, I know Avery Book shared a story about Reed Carico, and I wouldn't want to get hit by him. That's for sure. We're old. We might not be able to get up the next day. If Carico I know I wouldn't us. be able to get up the next day. Shamblin trying to run past Jacob Sloan, but Sloan wraps Shamblin him up by the, the ankles Jacob after a game Sloan of a couple the there. Tackle. There's too many years on this body to be able to, <laughs> 52 to be exact, to, to be able to take a, re, a kit from Reed Carico and be able to, <laughs> to get up. See if the Blue Devils can get a play off here with 15 seconds to look over to the sideline as Vanco gets the call in from his coaching staff, and I think they're just going to just going let, let this one bleed out, out and yeah. we'll go into the fourth quarter with the score 49-7 to Ironton. Final quarter coming your way here on the My Town TV Sports Network. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Man writes, if you like boneless wings, you dirty. Not anymore. B-Dubs completely reinvented their boneless wings. Now they're marinated and packed with so much meat, it doesn't make sense. Get here for the new boneless wings. Buffalo Wild Wings. Roar! Gallia Academy in Fighting Tiger territory, trailing though 49 to seven as we begin the fourth quarter. Ben Spicer, Mike Miller here on the call on the Montown TV Sports Network. Benko, the starting quarterback, still in for Gallia Academy. He's dropping back to pass, flushed out, and has to just get rid of it as in providing pressure for Ironton was senior that Dylan Carpenter. I think they're trying to decide whether this may be grounding or not. I don't know that there was a receiver in the area there. 
The official over there on the sideline looked like he was wanting to pull his flag, but I'm not sure if he's going to or not. No flag. Oh, now he's throwing it. Okay, intentional grounding. Intentional grounding. So that will back Galley Academy it's up Gallia even Academy. further here and make this a fourth and very long. We saw the Blue Devils with a fourth and 40 earlier this game. It's going to be a fourth and a long ways to go here. Yeah, no doubt about that. Looks like they're going to go for it this time, though. Uh, and they really don't have much choice being down 49-7 to here in the fourth quarter. Uh, Vanco, uh, that was, and I think that was pressure by Ironton's defensive line with just three or at most four pressure. I mean, good job by the defensive backfield uh, in covering the receivers there and not giving Vanco anywhere to go with the football, and he just had to try to throw it away. So it goes from the Ironton 38 to the Gallia Academy 46 after the penalty. Empty set for Vanco, his team trailing 49-7. to Back to pass. Looking long over the middle of the field oh. and nearly picked off there by Landon Landco's Wilson. Pass. It's a turnover well on Landon downs Wilson. for Gallia Academy. Give Good break the on the ball the there from down. Landon Wilson, the Ironton sophomore who has made plays time and time again. We've seen him isolated in single coverage at times here Give through two games for Ironton. Absolutely. Mike? Yeah, absolutely. He's done a great job there. I, you know, tough – Tough one that he didn't come up with that one. It was kind of right there in his hands. Uh, but he's done a really good job a couple times tonight. It looked like that maybe he was trailing that receiver just a touch. But then he has that last closing step that's been able to get into the passing lane and break it up or at least uh, get in front of the receiver and make it a difficult catch for that receiver. Let's honor the Ironton seniors. Again, we'll have senior night coverage coming your way on My Town TV coming up tomorrow as Ironton takes a timeout here with 10.01 to go in the game. Uh, Ironton's seniors this year, Will York, Trent Hacker, Lance Rand, Kyle Howe, Erickson Barnes, Reed Carico, Cameron Deer, Dalton Crabtree, Gunnar Crawford, Uriah Meadows, Dylan Carpenter, Ashton Silva, Owen Eisen, Matthew Davis, Brady Freeman, Chase Stevens, Rocky White, and Jimmy Mallmeister. Hopefully I didn't miss anyone there on that list. While we have this opportunity, let's go ahead and mention Gallia Academy's seniors as well. Cameron Webb, James Armstrong, Zach Hemby, Trent Johnson, Zach Belleville, Grant Bryan, Michael Bisi, Adam Stout, Riley Starnes, Jarrell Scott, Joshua Peaks, Cohen Duncan, and Brant Rocky. We got a new quarterback in here for Ironson. It will uh, be Will game. York. Will York. One of Ironton seniors. As we mentioned, Trevor Carter in the backfield. I'll try to get. out wide. Terrence West as well. Can't see who the far side receiver is. I'll you try to get some of the new linemen in there as well. I see Angela Wilson. Dylan Carpenter, number 45, is in. York keeps it himself on the RPO. Sheds several tackles. Still on his feet. And bullying a Gallia Academy defender and Will late York. contact. Ball, out of Gallia. bounds. Finally a flag throw. Flags on the play. As that was Cohen Duncan, a little frustration starting to boil over. Oh, we have multiple Gallia tackle. Academy defenders down on that play. To, to give you the lineman that I've seen in here, Ben, Angela Wilson, or Angela Washington, uh, number 53, number 50, Ashton Silva, number 51, Owen Eisen, number 50, 56, Blake Murrell, and number 62, Evan Wilds, are into the game for the Tigers. Also seeing the game, I think you mentioned Erickson Barnes. Will of course, York, Will York as – the quarterback, and I believe Terrence West, number Personal 29, has entered the game as well. Personal foul on the late hits from Gallia Academy. And also Jaquez Keys has entered the game, who I thought played really well in the second half down at Portsmouth, had some nice runs. I think he had probably 40, 50 yards in the second half at the Portsmouth game. Absolutely. Ball comes out to the Blue Devil 28 now after the Personal foul penalty. Good run from Will York. High formation now for York. Keys in the backfield for the Tigers. He gets it up the middle. And picks up a solid gain there on nice his job. first carry of the game. The Had a great Cameron game, Webb as you said, last tackle. week mm -hmm. against Portsmouth. I think he brings a lot to the table for well, Ironton, just a junior. Yeah, he's just a junior. And then you've also had Trevor Carter, who we've seen tonight, who's just a sophomore. Uh, and then you got Carpenter, quarterback. I mean, the, obviously they've, they're a great team this year, but the future looks bright for Ironton going forward. It seems like it's just next man up over here in this program under Coach Trevin Pendleton. Big win for Coach Pendleton and the Fighting Tigers tonight. 
Absolutely. Just waiting to see what the final score will be as they have dominated all facets, facets of this one as it's Terrence West on the jet sweep run. Penalty flag flying in, might have gained Terrence a yard. Ball, and as we said, we've got some penalty markers down there as well. Man, man, it's going to be on Ironton. I believe it was a hold. Holding against the Tigers. So we'll see where they spot this one, a 10-yard penalty. On the Fighting Tigers after the run there from Terrence West. West, another guy who made some big plays last week for Ironton in the second half against Portsmouth. Absolutely. Had a nice game last week. I mean, I thought that the the – the, the players that don't play as much, not on the first team, I thought played really well in the second half against Portsmouth last week. Also, Lynn now in at fullback. Keys in the backfield. They send West in motion again, and this time they'll run a jet sweep to the opposite side. Oh. West still on his feet, and he's brought down by the ankles. That was Trent Johnson on the tackle for Gallia Academy, but another solid run from yeah, West. Yeah, I thought he was just about to break that one. If he could have got through that last tackle, he might still be running. Uh, it kind of opened up for him when he Trent made that. Johnson turn around the end and started to cut up field. Uh, they hung up, Gallia Academy was able to hang on to his leg there and, and get the rest of them in there for the tackle. If not, he may have went all, may, may have went the distance for a touchdown. Eight yard run on the jet sweep makes it third down and eight. High formation, it's York under center. Keys in the backfield, they'll hand it off to Keys. He's following the blocking of Austin Lynn, and he's able to pick up a couple, but it's going to bring a up a fourth down and short. See what Ironton elects to do here. I think you're probably going to see them uh, go for it again. I, I wouldn't be surprised to maybe see the ball in Will York's hands, maybe a little bit of a rollout here on a, a, a fake run up the middle and maybe seeing him roll out around the end or they you know, could be just play regular Ironton football and go straight ahead. Weekly the fullback, Keys is the running back, and they'll go two Keys. Keys trying to fight for that first down, and I think he got one yard more than he needed. Yep, first sure down, did. Ironton. Brody Pallor on the tackle. Give the a first so that puts down. Ironton in to the red zone. Tigers with a 49-7 advantage here. We're under seven minutes to go now in this one. Clock rolling at 6.50. Tigers don't need to rush here as they look to just run this one out and improve to 2-0 on the season with Cole Grove coming to town next week. York with the toss out to Keys. Oh, and Keys brought down hard. And that's another penalty there. on Cohen Duncan. He had that late hit just moments ago. Yeah, I think they're going to get a horse collar on that one if I'm not mistaken there. Either that or a face mask, but I believe it's going to be a horse collar. Gabe Rayner on the tackle. Flags on the play. That's at least as if that's a – oh, it's a face mask. Okay. I was going to say if that's First a horse collar, it's one of the few games I've seen of where they've had multiple it. horse collar tackles. But that's going to put Ironton down inside the 10-yard line first and goal. And, you know, something that's uh, interesting to me, Mike, is the gaiters that you wear, the masks. I was reading yes. the, the COVID protocol rules. If you're brought down by that, that counts as a horse collar. Wow. I didn't I didn't, did not know that. But, I mean, I, I can see why they would do that and why they would call that uh, because that could be a little bit scary if you're being pulled down Horn by keeps that. it himself, and he's angling for the corner of the end zone, and he's in. Touchdown, Ironton. Touchdown, as they add to their lead, Will it's the quarterback keeper, Jordan. and Will York scores. Nice job by Will York. He runs the football really well uh, and really has been a, a, a big asset to this Ironton football team. You know, Coach Pendleton talked about he really fought with uh, Carpenter for the starting position but has done an, a great job at the wide receiver on the first team offense and has done a great job uh, here on the second team being able to guide them into the end zone. Mollmeister on for the extra points. We're right at about five minutes to go here, fourth quarter. As Ironton has put a 50-piece nugget on the board once again. They'll blow this one dead. Mollmeister will have to attempt the extra point good. again on the play. if that penalty is on Ironton. Officials say All it's against Gallia Academy, Academy, so the yep. extra point up and good. 56-7. to seven. Tigers leading here in this one with 4.47 to play in the game. What? I don't understand. I don't understand why they're kicking again. I would just decline the penalty and 
take the extra point that was good. I don't understand this. Well, that wastes more time off the clock <laughs> if you kick again. So That's true. That's what Ironton will do. And <laughs> they got Gary Academy I, offsides again. I was going to say he was offside again, but they did not throw the flag. All right, well, 55-27, 421 to go here in this one as this game starts to wind down. You're watching Ironton and Galley Academy here on the Montown TV Sports Network. Whether your family is gathering at our house or yours, let Smoke and Jays make it easy. Smoke and Jays Ribbon Brew House, located just two miles off I-64 at exit 185 in Ashland, Kentucky. What if I told you there was a place where you didn't need to worry about a dress code or fancy reservation? Oh, and they also had a $10 lunch menu and 40 items under 20 bucks. The Winchester Steak, Seafood, and Bourbon Bar. All flavor and no fuss. Fifty-five to seven, Ironton. Your score. As we've got about three minutes to go with this one. Running clock has been in effect since early on here in this second half. Dominant performance from Ironton tonight. Maulmeister gets a foot into this one. Backs up Williams. Williams will field it inside his own five-yard line, and here goes Williams down the near sideline as he's brought down by Dylan Carpenter. Good return from Briar Williams. Yeah. Still hustling, still giving everything that he has all the way to the bitter end here. Really playing hard for the Blue Devils. Gets it down to the Blue Devil 27. We hope you'll join us next week as Ironton hosts Cole Grove here on the My Town TV mm -hmm. Sports Network. As Mike alluded to, we'll have all sorts of games coming your way yeah. next weekend here on My Town TV. Board County introducing their new stadium as they host Bath County. East Carter will take on West Carter in the battle for the barrel. And then on Saturday night, we will have Pikeville, the Class 1A state champion last year in Kentucky, coming up to take on Raceland. You don't want to miss all that exciting action here on Gallia the MyTown TV Sports Network. Galley Academy taking a timeout with 2.10 to play in this game again. Uh, Ironton, just really impressive to me tonight, Mike. Super impressive. I, I mean, I, you Go know, it's, it's going to be hard for me to believe that, that this Andrew team's not going to be one Bay of Bay the top two or three teams in the state in Division Bay. 5 in All their Tiger division. Uh, they've been Out very Tiger impressive Alley. the first two weeks uh, that I've seen them here. Uh, and – you know, they, they haven't taken a step back. Uh, they've really come out and, you know, come to play both nights. I don't expect that to be any different next week. Uh, and then, you know, we're talking, you know, from now you're in five weeks, you're talking playoffs uh, because uh, the way that the COVID protocols have gone, we play six regular season games. And then I believe it would be October the 9th, if I'm not mistaken, would be opening week one of the Ohio State playoffs. So, uh, Ironton looking forward to that because everyone knows that they'll be in it. Hudson Shamblin, new quarterback in for Galley Academy. He keeps it himself. Look out. He's got a nice run Look here. Out. Shamblin off. He's in Ironton territory. One man to beat. Puts on a stiff arm. Still on still his feet going. Shamblin. Wow. And he's all the way down to the 11-yard line. What a run from the freshman. Amazing run. I mean, he just did not give up. Come out of the – come out from behind the offensive line, made a cut to the sideline, and was off. Just about went the distance. Great run by him. Uh, you know, exciting run for them. Obviously, it's a little bit too late. We're only a minute and a half away, and they're down 40-plus. Uh, but at least playing hard and trying to, to score and, and uh, you know, just have a little bit of pride to finish off this game. Hudson Shamblin, the quarterback. Hunter Shamblin, the running back. They've had some nice plays down Absolutely. the stretch of this fourth quarter for Gallia Academy. And we've got a pre-snap penalty on Ironton. I think that was Austin Lynn guilty of that infraction there. Yep, guy has got about a minute here to see if they can punch it in from the six-yard line. Nice job by Shamlin here. Uh, as you said, both Shamlin's in the backfield. Under a minute to go now. Shamblin hands off to Shamblin and met by several Hunter Ironton Shamblin defenders. Coming up with the stop that time for Ironton. 
was John Wiley. Daryl Henderson on the tackle. Daryl Henderson also in there for the Tigers. 30 seconds to go now in this one. Ironton with a 55-7 lead. The question is, will that be our final score here as Gallery Academy comes in the pistol formation? They've got a man in at H-back, and it's a handoff up yeah. the middle once again. Hunter, Hunter Shamblin, and Ironton's defense looks like going to hold strong down the stretch of this one. I think Gallery Academy might call James for a timeout here. Looks like it. And I know uh, earlier James Armstrong came out, out with looked like a little bit of an injury, but he looks to be in, in good shape here on the sideline, so I'm glad to see that that injury wasn't too severe. They will absolutely need him down the stretch of this one, and that's a guy who will be playing some college football if he so chooses. He has a lot of talent for the Blue Devils. No doubt about that. I, I've been impressed uh, a, a little bit with uh, Vanco for Gallia Academy. He's had some nice throws. He has a good arm on him. Uh, I think there's some talent there, uh, and, and I think uh, they may be able to improve going forward. I think their passing attack could be uh, very good as it develops uh, throughout this season. So Gallia Academy with 10 seconds to go in this one in Ironton territory. Pistol formation, two receivers to both sides. And it'll be that quarterback keeper again. No, oh. it's an RPO as looking to throw was Shamblin. He tried to find Mason Skidmore, but the pass is That's going to be it. Oh, nope, we've got another timeout. Trying to punch it in here. Coach Penrod trying to get him a touchdown here to end the game. Timeout. Some of the Ironton gotcha. fans not too happy. A little bit of booze coming from the home side over there. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit before the game started. These two teams not the uh, biggest fans of one no, another. No, I don't know. They are not. It's a nice little rivalry has yeah. been created since Coach Penrod and Coach Pendleton yeah. came to these respective sidelines for Gallia Academy and Ironton. No love lost between these two teams. But that was Gallia Academy's final time out of the game. They'll come out, and this will be the final play of the game, of course, barring any type of penalty. But an opportunity here to see the future of both of these teams sure. as – uh, this game obviously well in hand, but a little yes. pride at stake for the yeah, offense absolutely. and the defense. Quarterback Hudson Shamblin, freshman back out there for the Blue Devils. Blitz coming from Ironton. Shamblin, oh! fun throw, and he is sacked. Huge hit from Cole Freeman, Hunter the sophomore, yep. and that brings this game to a close. So that comes back to backfire against the Blue Devils as they take a 12-yard loss to end the game. Ironton comes out on top, 55-7. to Another dominant win for the Tigers. We'll recap this game when we return here on the My Town TV Sports Network. This is Joel Dooley with AvantiClean. Do you have a mold problem, flooding or water problems? The air ducts in your home or business need clean. I have a team of licensed and trained professionals ready to answer any home problem you may be having. Call us today at 606-331-5001 or find us online at AvantiClean.com. Credit unions are not real banks. Is that so? They're like secret societies with a rigorous process to join. <laughs> there are a lot of misconceptions about credit unions when in fact there are credit unions for everyone. What makes us different from other banks is that our members have a voice and our profits come back to you. At Members Choice Credit Union, you're a name, not a number. Quality Marathon Gasoline, great monthly specials on snacks and beverages, and fantastic service. Those are the qualities of Clark's Pump and Shops. Clark's Pump and Shops are a division of the John W. Clark Oil Company. Clark's Pump and Shop. Return. Return. Refresh. Refuel. At Ashland Credit Union, things are a little backwards. As a strong supporter of youth education, Ashland Credit Union is the only area bank or credit union providing funds to six participating schools for every qualifying debit card swipe made. Gillum Drug, 1237 Carter Avenue, Ashland, is a locally owned pharmacy devoted to providing excellent customer service, not found at the chain drug stores, and Gillum Drug will treat you like family. Stop by today and experience it. Gillum Drug, next to Domino's.
Back here recapping this game on the Montown TV Sports Network. 55-7, to Ironton. Let's take you through the scoring summary to get things going. In the first quarter, it was Reed Carrico with a five-yard touchdown run with 8.45 to go in the first. Carrico followed that up with another touchdown run, this time from seven yards out to make it 14 to nothing. Ironton with 6.23 to go here in the first quarter. The Tigers then took a 21-0 lead after Tayden Carpenter found Aaron Masters for a 54-yard scoring touchdown. Gallia Academy trailing 21 to nothing at this point, but they answer as Noah Vanco found Briar Williams for an 81-yard touchdown. Reed Carrico then came right back with a 17-yard score of his own to make it 28 to seven. Ironton, that's where we stood at halftime. And then Carrico, right out of the locker room, continued his hot night as he punched it in for a, another score after a 65-yard kickoff return. He found pay dirt from 17 yards out, or excuse me, one yard out to make it 35 to seven. Ironton then would score again to take a 42 to seven lead on Kyle Howe's incredible 37 mm -hmm. yard punt return. Tayden Carpenter then on a beautiful play, a little rollout found Dalton Crabtree wide open to make it 49 to seven. And Ironton added their final score of the night on a Will York nine yard touchdown run. Added it all together and it's 55 to seven. Ironton coming out on top of Gallia Academy here in this one. We'll take a look at some unofficial stats when we return here on the Mytown TV Sports Network. Better banking brings better opportunity. If you're looking for a loan, I encourage you to shop local. At Kentucky Farmers Bank, we make our decisions right here in our office. We give you the loans that you need and the personal service that you deserve. Kentucky Farmers Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Here at Infusion Solutions, one of the things that we're most proud of is the relationship that we develop with our patients. From the people on the phone to the delivery drivers, I mean, these people are a part of my life. They take care of me. I would recommend Infusion Solutions to anybody. Discover what we're all about right now at Infusion Solutions. If you can picture yourself in a better job and a better life, there are thousands of openings in Kentucky right now. And with the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship, you can prepare for many of them tuition free. Good at Ashland Community and Technical College, this scholarship offers 100% free tuition for classes that can prepare you for a great job in health care, advanced manufacturing, and more in as little as 13 weeks. Get started today at WorkReadyKentucky.com. Brand Man writes, if you like boneless wings, you dirty. Not anymore. B-Dubs completely reinvented their boneless wings. Now they're marinated and packed with so much meat, it doesn't make sense. Get here for the new boneless wings. Buffalo Wild Wings. Roar! Back here recapping a 55-7 Ironton win over Gallia Academy here from Tanks Memorial Stadium. Let's look now at some unofficial statistics here in this one. Reed Carrico, 11 carries for 83 yards and four touchdowns. Trevor Carter with seven runs for 33 yards. Cameron Deer, five for 33 as well. Tatum Carpenter, three rushes for 15. Jacquez Keys, four for 14. Will York, two for eight. Terrence West, one for eight. Kyle Howe, one for four. Landon Wilson, one for zero yards. And Ashton Duncan, one for minus one. Tayden Carpenter, another solid game for the sophomore. He goes eight for 12, 153 yards, two touchdowns. And most importantly, he does not turn the ball over. Receiving statistics for Ironton, Aaron Masters had a 54-yard touchdown catch. Trent Hacker with two grabs for 41 yards. Cameron Deer with one catch for 23. Reed Carrico had one catch for 14. Landon Wilson, one for 11. Trevor Carter, one for seven. And Dalton Crabtree, one for three. For Gallia Academy, their leading rusher had one carry. It was the freshman, <laughs> yeah. Hudson Chamblin, late in this game 
with a 62-yard run. Briar Williams with two carries for 21. The big one, though, James Armstrong with 10 runs for minus one yards. Michael B.C. with one carry for minus five. Hunter Shamblin had five for minus nine. Noah Vanco, two for minus 27. Vanco was 11 for 23 passing for 178 yards and a score. Hudson Shamblin, 0 for 1. Briar Williams eclipsed the 100-yard mark. Four catches, 400 yards, and a touchdown. Michael B.C. with one for 40. Donovan Woodson, two for 21. James Armstrong, three for nine. And Kenyon Franklin, one for eight. Some notable team statistics. Ironton with 23 first downs, two for two on fourth down as well. And no turnovers for the Fighting Tigers. No turnovers for Gallia Academy either, but they were two for 14 on third down. They had wow. just seven first downs all game, and both teams with a whole a lot of penalties in this yeah. one. A 55-7 to win. Mike Miller, any final thoughts from this one here in the home opener for Ironton? No, I, I mean, the, the one thing that I will say is, is uh, you know, I've said this a lot uh, throughout the game tonight, and Coach Pendleton had mentioned uh, when we talked to him earlier in the week that he their goal was to make – the opposing team one-dimensional, regardless of who that team was. Uh, and he obviously made Gallia Academy one-dimensional tonight. They could not run the football with with any success whatsoever. Were able to complete a few passes. Did get the big pass to Briar Williams for the 81-yard touchdown, but that was pretty much it. Hit a couple other pass plays, but really struggled offensively. Uh, Ironton did a great job of making them one-dimensional. And then Ironton, when they – uh, had stubbed their toe a couple of times. They went back to their the bread and butter, which is run the football and, uh, you know, kind of feed Reed Carico, Carter, and Crabtree, and they did a, a great job tonight, uh, Crabtree and Deer, and, and they did a great job tonight really running the football and controlling the game from start to finish. I think Gallia Academy's got a lot of positives uh, going forward. I think they're going to have a good season. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, talent on that team, but uh, Ironton was just too much tonight uh, for the Gallia Academy Blue Devils. So we got some other final scores. Northwest, a winner over Notre Dame, 10-6. to Memphis trailing Wheelersburg now 42-21. Sorry, Fighting Tiger fans. <laughs> and another final score to update you on. It's Waverly over Portsmouth West 49-13. Here, Ironton comes out on top 55-7. They improve to 2-0. and And they'll welcome their Lawrence County rival Colgrove here to town next week. Of course, we'll have that for you here yep. right here on My Town TV with pregame beginning around 640-645. That's next Friday. A whole host of games, as we mentioned, coming your way next Friday. And also a reminder that we'll have the senior night festivities from tonight on the My Town TV page tomorrow. So make sure you stay tuned for that. For Mike Miller, I'm Ben Spicer wrapping things up here from Tanks Memorial Stadium. Again, a 55-7 to win for Ironton. We'll see you back next week here at Tanks Memorial as the Tigers host the Hornets. You're watching high school football here on the My Town TV Sports Network.